near Evansville this morning, causing some damage to buildings and homes. Lots of storms hit parts of the state overnight, and more are expected today. The most likely threat will be uh, hail because we're on the eastern end. The tornado threat might develop as the evening goes on. Matt Eckhoff with the National Weather Service, who says the threat actually increases the further east you go. The numbers show Senator Mike Braun as the front runner on the Republican side of the Indiana governor's race. That's the picture being painted by a poll from Indy Politics and Crossroads Public Affairs, who surveyed 500 likely Republican voters, and 33% of them said that they would pick Braun. 30% though said they were undecided. An arrest made in a shooting on the southwest side of the city, where police found a man shot to death on the front porch of a home. The information led us to, to a residence in the same 1300 block of Capitol Street in regards to a possible suspect barricaded inside of a residence. Um, our uh, IAPD SWAT team, they responded. Officer William Young, who says that SWAT situation turned up empty, but since then he says a person has been arrested. Three people were hurt after a plane crashed and a plane crashed near Muncie Monday morning. Donnie Burgess reports. Delaware County Airport Director Tim Beatty. A Piper Cherokee aircraft that was en route to Muncie from the Bloomington Airport crashed just west of the airport about approximately a half mile. The pilot and two people walking on a nature trail nearby were hurt, some of whom will be transferred to Indianapolis. It's unclear what caused the crash. That's where the FAA and National Transportation Safety Board have stepped in. Donnie Burgess, 93 WIBC Mobile News. Robbie Avila says he and his Indiana State teammates are staying focused on who they are as they get ready for their matchup in the NIT Final Four. So just being able to focus on that, you know, I think everybody is uh, sacrificed a lot and, you know, it kind of shows, you know, you don't you don't win 31 games on accident. They take on Utah tonight inside Hinkle Fieldhouse. Tip off at 7 o'clock. Traffic on the fives, Matt Bear. All right, Kurt, looking at Lawrence, northbound 465 at Fallen Creek. The entrance to the express lane been shut down all morning, so the express lane is out. That's still the case with traffic backed up to I-70. Stop and go before a 14-minute delay. Stand down a little bit, and we are now moving through that area. At least we're moving. Southbound 465 at the same area. The left lane is blocked at Fall Creek while crews assist on the other side of the interstate. Traffic is slow past 71st Street. Whiteland Road shut down in Johnson County in front of the high school and it's closed from US 31 over to Center Street because of a single no timetable on when that will reopen. Traffic sponsored by the Indianapolis Men's Clinic. Guys, solve your ED today with an intimacy guarantee only at the Indianapolis Men's Clinic. If you don't perform, you don't pay. Call the Indianapolis Men's Clinic at 999-9000. That's 999-9000. I'm Matt Bear with traffic on the fives. Follow us at WIBC Traffic. Andrea Bocelli. In concert. Presented by Stiefel. Saturday, April 13th, 8 p.m. Gamebridge Fieldhouse. With the Indianapolis Symphony Orchestra. Conducted by Stephen Mercurio. The world's most romantic voice. Andrea Bocelli in concert. On sale now at Gainbridge Fieldhouse Box Office. If you see me stopped in the McDonald's drive through just staring at the menu with my what should I order face, don't interrupt. It's the most important decision I'll make all day. Decide on delicious with buy one, get one for a dollar. Now with the hot and spicy McChicken, McDouble, or small fries. Price and participation may vary. Cannot be combined with any other offer or combo meal. Valid for product of equal or lesser value. The forecast from the American Standard Heating Weather Center. Morning showers and storms. Afternoon strong to severe storms. Today's high, 71. Rain and storms ending early this evening. Breezy and colder overnight, a low of 38. I'm Wish TV Storm Track 8 meteorologist Marcus Bailey, 93 WIBC. It is cloudy and 57 on Monument Circle. A severe thunderstorm watch in effect for much of the area. I'm Kurt Darling on the level on the go and on WIBC.com. <laughs> You're listening to Rob Kendall. When we talk about sending money somewhere, mm -hmm. we're talking about printing the money because we have no money. And Casey Daniels. My government would never lie to me, would they? On 93 WIPC. Good morning. It is Tuesday, April 2nd. It is seven minutes after nine. You're listening to the Kendall and Casey Show on 93 WIBC. Hey, it's Tuesday. How about we start off with some gaslighting from the White House? 
Sounds about right. Oh, is it my turn to talk? No, I'm just saying. How about it? I mean, you were just rip rolling through that, and so I didn't want to, you know, disrupt your mojo there. But sure, Casey. But why would this day be any different than any other day from the White House? <laughs> exactly. Okay, so President Biden said that he did not declare Easter Sunday the transgender day of visibility. Wait, 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 wait. Time out here. No, he said, what? what he what? said, I didn't do that. But I. It wasn't him who I, designated the I, day. I distinctly remember mm-hmm. him putting out a proclamation. Mm-hmm. Uh, I believe it was at fr- maybe Friday that it came out. Mm-hmm. Um saying that Easter Sunday was the transgender visit what is it transgender visibility okay can we just say this right now and I'm probably gonna get in trouble and if this is my last day here then I've really enjoyed working with you I don't care anymore um can we just say how ridiculous it is the catering to the trans people the rolling over backwards for the trans people the trans the actual trans community because let's face it and let's be honest and again if it's my last day i've really really enjoyed being a part of your lives over the past eight years and i've really been enjoyed being in people's homes and kev it's been an honor to get to know you let's just be honest about 95 percent of the whole trans movement is clickish stuff of people saying look at me i'd like attention mm-hmm. and in some cases they're doing irreparable harm to themselves but of the people who are actually trans like because there are it's a disorder it's a that's why it's been qual- qualified for years and years and years as a disorder because that's what it is. It's not normal to be a man and want to chop off your penis. It's a fraction of the population, mm-hmm. a fraction, a minuscule, tiny, eensy, weensy, teensy percentage of the population who believes that they were born in the wrong body. And yet, over the past, I don't know, whatever it's been, five to seven years, we as a society have rolled over backwards to these people and we act like there is a transsexual on every single corner and every single one of these people is, it, they're just popping up left and right. This is insane. Can we just say that out loud? It is insane the way we have catered as a society mm-hmm. to a minuscule, tiny percentage of the population. It is nuts. So Joe Biden said he didn't do it. And then Speaker Mike Johnson tweeted out, this you, Joe Biden? Here's the proclamation. Now, therefore, I, Joseph R. Biden Jr., President of the United States of America, by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Constitution and the laws of the United States, do hereby proclaim March 31st, 2024, as Transgender Day of Visibility. Sounds like he made a proclamation. He made a proclamation. Okay, so and let's then turned around and denied it. Let's work through this, okay? So, do you believe that he's just now? You you asserted it as gaslighting, and I and normally I wouldn't I wouldn't doubt you on that. However, it is Biden. So, do you believe that perhaps he doesn't remember that he made the proclamation? That's there, a possibility. I, look, I'm not trying to be a jerk here. I'm just saying it's 50-50 whether he's actually gaslighting and lying right to your face. Or mm-hmm. whether he doesn't actually remember that he made that proclamation. Or there's the other possibility that somebody else made it on his behalf. Yeah. So which is worse? You're being gaslit by the Biden administration. He doesn't remember that he did it. Or somebody else is doing it on his behalf. And clearly they're placating this very small group of people because the Democrat Party, the base of the Democrat Party, is run by lunatics. I always say this. The base of the Republican Party is run, not the base, but the power structure of the Republican Party. That's a better way to put it. The power structure of the Republican Party is run by liars. The power structure of the Democrat Party is run by lunatics. Mm-hmm. And what you have seen here is the Democrats every single year cater more and more and more further and further and further into the insane because that is where the core power structure of their party is. What's interesting about the Republicans and Democrats is if the power structure, if the base of the Republican Party actually controlled the Republican Party, we would have a much better Republican Party. The base of the Democrat Party is the power structure of the Democrat Party. Like, Does does that make sense? Mm -hmm. The conservatives, which are the base of the Republican Party, have no actual power or influence inside the Republican Party. The Democrats, on the other hand, allow the base, which is these maniac lunatic people, to actually write and dictate public policy. All right, so here's the White House press secretary, Karine Jean-Pierre, and she's saying that this is all just misinformation. So surprised by the misinformation that's been out there around this, and I want to be very clear. Every year for the past several years, yeah. on March 31st, Trans- Transgender Day of Visibility is marked. And as we know, for folks who understand the calendar and how it works, Easter falls on different Sundays, right, every year. And this year, it happened to coincide with uh, Transgender Visibility Day. And so that is the simple fact. That is what has happened. That is where we are. She's so condescending. 
for those that understand the calendar. This has been going on for years. Yeah, guess what? Easter's been going on a lot longer. Yeah, like 2,000 years. Like, how about you move your visibility day? Or how about not have it at all? Well, this is the point. It's not about moving the day. It's about this is insane. This is insane that as a society we are placating this. Look, I have obsessive compulsive disorder. I don't expect a day for my irrational, illogical behavior. What I expect people to do is point out to me when I am engaging, whether it's making sure the garage door's shut or the fridge door's shut or excessive amounts of times or whatever, Rob, you're engaging in obsessive compulsive behavior and that's not normal. That's what I expect from people. I don't expect a day. I don't expect a proclamation. We are, we are bending over backwards for the insane. It is not normal to have a penis and want to chop it off. It is not normal to not have a penis and want to grow one. You are not special. You need to seek help. The same way as people with obsessive compulsive. That's why they're called disorders, Casey. Mm -hmm. Well, here's Ron DeSantis, and he's going off on Joe Biden. President Biden's redubbing of the holiday as trans transgender day. Wait a minute. He said that didn't happen. He said he didn't do it. So which raises the question, either he's not being honest mm -hmm. with the public or he really didn't know what was going on. And so my question would be, who's running the presidency? Is it a bunch of uh, a woke 20 something year old White House staffers that just put out uh, this drivel whenever they whenever they want? Uh, so I don't know who's in charge. The fact that he's not owning up to it, I don't either way it's bad. Either he's not being honest or he really didn't have anything to do with it. But what we did was um, uh, we had a, a big Easter egg hunt. We, I mean, kids were uh, didn't even change when they got back from church. They went in. They, they found a lot of Easter eggs. And it was like a massive amount. So there's Ron DeSantis telling, you know, Joe Biden and everybody else, knock it off. Okay. Oh, so wait, I have a whole week, somebody said in the YouTube chat. OCD Awareness Week, <laughs> October 8th through the 4th. That's crazy. <laughs> also crazy and shouldn't be a thing. That's crazy. There's no way that's an actual uh, OCD Awareness Week. Mm -hmm. You get a whole week. Congratulations. Oh, hot dang. You people better be kissing my backside October 8th through the 14th. <laughs> what are you, you going to do with your week? Oh, my goodness. I'm totally. I, do I get off that off work? Am I a protected? Is that protected? Do I get a uh, special? When did they say it is in October? Octo 8th through the 14th. Okay. Well, you're not uh, interfering with any, you know, holiest of Christian holidays. Right. But I'm saying, like, what what is Urban One going to do for me? Do I get a day <laughs> off? Do I get to work from home? Do Where I get are a. Are you going to get recognized? Do you want us to light up the building in special colors? Is Dion going to write a proclamation? Do you, do you want a flag? What do you What it, do you need? But we're laughing at it. And look, I have this, but I'm laughing at it because I don't expect special treatment. What I expect is for me to be able to, which I did years ago, you you get help for the thing. You learn how to live with it. You learn how to control it. And other than being a highly neurotic individual, I lead, lead a pretty productive existence, right? Like mm -hmm. I learned at a young age how to cope with the thing and, and it still gives me problems from time to time. But in terms of being a you know, a relatively high functioning member of society, I've been able to pull it off. I don't need a proclamation. I don't need a day. I certainly don't expect it to interfere with frickin' Easter, mm -hmm. which is the most is the celebration of the most important significant event in human history. But this is where the Democrat Party is. This is where the Democrat Party is now, where the transsexuals are more important than Jesus. Okay, so I wanted to air a couple clips for you. This is Joe Biden just to show you how sharp he is, exuding so much vigor here. This is from the balcony. He's inviting people to say hello to the Easter bunnies. Thanks, everybody. And by the way, say hello to oyster bunnies. Come on up, bunnies. Get up here. So oyster bunnies? You. That sounds Can we hear that disgusting. Again? disgusting. Thanks, everybody. And by the way, Say hello to oyster bunnies. Come on up, bunnies. Get up here so they can see you. The oyster bunnies. The oyster bunnies. You, do you harvest those out of the Apalachicola Bay? He is ridiculous. Uh huh. And here he is uh, really slurring during an interview with Al Roker. What is so special about this egg roll? Well, what's so special is uh, this, uh, open the, this is the people's house. And for, we expect for over 40,000 people to be here. It's the largest ever. And it just we just like to open it up the place and let people see this is their place. Is he drunk? I, you know when you go and have dental work done and yeah. they give you the Novocaine and you get a little yeah. swollen? It feels, it sounds like that's what he's feeling right I'm there. Like with his tongue is ice. too big. Are you that way with ice? Like if you just chewed a large amount of ice, mm -hmm. do you have trouble talking? Yeah. You think that he's like numb? Maybe he had a, a, a large amount of ice with his oyster bunnies. 
Possibly. But then there's this last oh, clip, no. and this is the most important of all. He is asked, what is his favorite memory in the White House? I don't know what, what the future holds, but what, what are your favorite memories about this place? Our kids jumping in bed with us, our, our grandkids when they're down here, just sneaking up and jumping in bed with us. That's my favorite memory here. They love it. Okay, so a couple things. Al Roker, we don't know what the future holds, but uh, what are your favorite memories here in the White House? And he could have said, oh, I don't know, helping Americans or proud of the policies that he's made or being surrounded by all of the history in the White House. Maybe even maybe even the delicious state dinners or uh, the wonderful food and meeting all the people all over the country. No, this weirdo, this creep, his favorite memory of being in the White House kids jumping in bed with us oh casey i'm not gonna let you sit here and disparage the legacy and memory of a well i mean an old man who's given so much casey mm -hmm. he's asked for so little in return mm -hmm. and here you are disparaging mm -hmm. the good gosh darn name of joe biden you're listening to the kendall and casey show it's 93 wibc how would you like to get a 13% bonus when you invest your money? Not only do you get a 13% bonus, you'll also get an annual return that's averaged 7% a year for the past 10 years. Hey, it's Kendall and Casey. Discover how you can get an upfront 13% bonus plus a competitive annual return that's averaged 7% a year for the past 10 years. Learn more from the retirement guy we trust, Bill Demery in Indy. Just call 317-932-9912. This is such a no-brainer for me. Right? You get an upfront 13% bonus. Plus a competitive annual return that's averaged 7% a year for the past 10 years. And it's backed by one of the largest insurance companies in the world. So call Bill now at 317-932-9912. It's 317-932-9912. Past performance is no guarantee of future returns. Like magic, it appears in the sky. A rainbow. Somewhere over that rainbow lurks not bluebirds or dreams. Hidden behind that beauty is trouble. Get a cone tornado right there. Don't be fooled. Tornado on the ground. Confirm tornado on the ground. Confirm tornadoes. Oh my gosh, look at it. Oh my gosh. This spring, depend on your severe weather station. Baseball size hill. 93 WIPC. Michelis presents Password. The word is basement. Okay. Wet. Ah, rain. Um, leaky. Mm, faucet. Stinky. <laughs> Socks. Uh, moldy. Uh, uh, underwear. Ugh, it's basement. Oh. Really moldy underwear? Uh, well, sometimes. Ew. I did not need to know that. Basement waterproofing and French drains. Life happens. Michelis happens to help you through it. Come on. Take your basement back. 844-FIX-INDY. Hi, I'm Henry Winkler. My eyes are very important to me. My eyes connect me with everything I love. I loved my late father-in-law dearly. He always lit up a room, but his vision dimmed with age. He had age-related macular degeneration, or AMD. And since partnering with Apellus, I've learned there's an advanced form of dry AMD called geographic atrophy, or GA. His struggle with vision loss made me want to help others know about GA's warning signs. For some, colors appear dull or washed out. For others, hazy or blurred vision make it hard to see details, like fine print on price tags. Many have trouble seeing in the dark, making driving at night difficult. GA gets worse over time and cannot be reversed. If you think you have GA, don't wait. Treatments are available. Ask a retina specialist about FDA-approved treatments for GA and go to gawontwait.com. Indy's leader in patio installation is now offering a new driveway package. Schedule a free estimate today at IndyDecorativeConcrete.com. That's IndyDecorativeConcrete.com.
It's the Kendall and Casey Show on 93 WIPC. Just when I think you couldn't possibly be any dumber, you go and do something like this. And totally redeem yourself! <laughs> <laughs> Another reason that you won't want to fly. Good morning. It's 22 minutes after 9 with Kendall and Casey on 93 WIBC. So a Boeing pilot was forced to make a return to the airport after a foul smell from a broken toilet filled the entire oh, cabin. No. Does this sound familiar? Like something uh, we were dealing with here? So um, if you missed yesterday's show, I, is the bathroom open now? Is I haven't looked. Been, is it open? Kev is nodding it's open. So I guess the bathroom had been closed mm-hmm. For like five days, yeah, there was some sort of horrific <laughs> incident in the bathroom. Now, our boss Matt Hiblin, because mm-hmm. I had a long conversation with him yesterday, did you about this? He was in the bathroom when it occurred. Oh, and, what happened? Well, he described it as though uh, remember in the the movie Ghostbusters where they're 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 talking about rivers and seas boiling, you know, mad floods, mass destruction. <laughs> he described it as. It came up from the sink because I asked him. He said, "Well, I was in there when it happened." I said, "Oh, you saw the culprit?" <laughs> and he goes, "No, I was in there by myself." And he said, he "I was the culprit." It was, <laughs> what was the culprit? <laughs> but he said he he began to see it came up through the sink Ew. as though it arose like some doomsday revelation, prophecy fulfilling like sort of event where it began to gurgle up and just exploded <laughs> through the sink. And he described himself. It was like as though he was. Harrison Ford in a new Indiana Jones movie where he was jumping over the counter and, you know, hanging on to the metal door, keeping his feet off the ground, you know, as though it it, it was horrific, I mean, just horrific what he described. Sewage water that was coming up? It was everything, Casey. All the stuff. Did he have to go home and change clothes? No, I think he escaped. Well, I don't know. I didn't ask about that. But he did escape. Now, my concern is that five days later, the issue appeared to still be Uh a thing. Well, it was so bad that it leaked out of the bathroom into the hallway and then into the women's bathroom, which was next door. So that must have been one heck of an explosion. I, um, I, I... I do wonder, though, if that was a singular event or clearly there was maybe some sort of issue. It had been building for a while. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that – and then it was so bad that apparently it caused – I'm don't. I was, I'm assuming, and this is dangerous too, but I'm assuming these two things are – there's a correlation, that tiles on the second floor mm-hmm. had cratered. <laughs> because of the <laughs> – yeah, explosion. Yeah. And we were on the fourth floor. That's how bad this thing was. The two floors <laughs> down, tiles were coming coming down. Anyway, so what? What? The, something similar happened on an airplane? Yeah, it was uh, United Airlines Flight 59. It was scheduled to go from Frankfurt to San Francisco. They ended up circling over the North Sea and going back. They were back. scheduled to go where, where to where? They were scheduled to go from Frankfurt, Germany to San Francisco. Oh, no. Yeah, long flight. They oh, ended up circling no. over the North Sea because of the bad smell and exactly same thing that the toilet uh, a seven on a seven-year-old plane uh-huh. had been defective and there was well stuff floating into the cabin of the plane from the bathroom i've asked this question for many 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 years and i'll mm-hmm. continue to ask you why anyone would voluntarily get on an airplane ever is just beyond me yeah it's just beyond me they ended up making a an emergency landing like i don't care how much time you save and it's like probably more reasonably priced <laughs> given the cost of gasoline if you're willing to fly like Spirit or whatever. Mm-hmm. But I, I don't care. Like why anyone would ever, given what you're subjected to and the people you're subjected to and the incidents potentially like this. You know, if you're in your automobile, it's just not an issue. Oh, right. I got to go to the bathroom you're now. By yourself, you can find a nice Bucky's or family diner or mm-hmm. something, and you know, public toilets are public toilets. But you go and you go about your business, and then you go about your day. You're not subjected to, to the s- waste overflowing yes, from the thank restroom, you. right? So I don't want to hear anything from anybody else anymore about my irrational fear of flying. That's not irrational. That is a thing that happened. It could happen on a flight near you. Well, the nice thing about this flight, at least they put the passengers up in hotel accommodations overnight. Oh, how big of them. And they rebooked them we on a different We let crap flight. flood all over your shoes. Here's a free Here's a free stay at the we, Motel We 8. know you had some place to be and you uh-huh. were expecting to get there, but you're going to be just a little bit delayed. I, th- I think if I had to go overseas, I would just get on a boat. <laughs> Right. I think I would just take a boat. 
Right. Although boats kind of fear give, bring me fear. Although yeah, I what fe- about the Titanic? Well, here's the problem. Here's the thing with that. I, th- I think in the modern era, now we're not talking yeah. like that submarine that went down mm-hmm. to try to find the Submersible, Titanic. Yeah. I feel like in a large cruise ship of any sort, one, technology's probably now to where you'd see the icebergs mm-hmm. if you had that or some sort of large <laughs> something that could impale the boat. Also, given technology, if the boat were to split in half, they would quickly be able to deploy a plane some sort of rescue <laughs> apparatus <laughs> yeah like a plane to come get you we've got to get to the news it's coming up on 93 wibc hi this is denny smith and the allergy season is getting a jump start on all of us and we really need to get ready to fight back how about having zero res help you take on dust and dander and allergens and even bacteria in your carpets with a great spring deal Get three rooms, zero resified, starting at just 139 bucks, and take 75 bucks off your air duct cleaning to get that true spring cleaning feel. It's unbelievable and kind of scary just how much of the uglies are in our carpets, and it's because those carpets are the largest air filter in the home. The Zero Res service is easy to line up. You can go online at zeroresindy.com. Do the scheduling at your convenience. And don't forget the ZR water difference. No soap, no residue, no harsh chemicals, leaving things really clean. Now mention WIBC, get three rooms of carpet cleaning starting at $139, bucks. plus you'll get $75 bucks off the air duct cleaning too. Call 317-388-5141 or book things online at zeroresindy.com. When it comes to remodeling your bathroom, do you think it matters if the guy who's actually in there doing the work cares about his job? Kate here from Baths R Us, and trust me, it matters a lot. Most bathroom remodelers hire the cheapest subcontractors they can find, provide no training, offer no benefits, and then fire them the second they don't have enough work to keep them busy. They can barely pay their bills, they hate their jobs, and that's the guy in there remodeling your bathroom. At Baths R Us, our installers are the lifeblood of our company, and we treat them that way. They are actual W-2 employees with great pay and benefits. Insurance, 401k, vehicles, the works. We always keep them busy, and they love their jobs. So call Baths R Us if you want a gorgeous new bathroom built with love by employees who love their jobs. Call now and get $1,500 off plus low to no monthly payments. Our number is 317-886-1761 or online at BathsRUs.com. That's BathsRUs.com. 93 WIBC Mobile News. On the level. On the go. Ship traffic moving again, at least a little bit. It's cloudy in 58 downtown. I'm Kirk Darling. Here's what's trending at 930. A temporary channel is now open around the side of the Baltimore Bridge collapse for essential vessels and for clearing debris. The Francis Scott Key Bridge collapsed last week after it was hit by a cargo ship, killing six construction workers and blocking a vital shipping lane into the port of Baltimore. Airstrikes from Israel hit a humanitarian Convoy in Gaza. Fox's Jonathan Savage. World Central Kitchen says an Israeli airstrike hit its aid convoy as it travelled along a coastal road in Gaza. Three British citizens, an Australian, a Polish national, a Palestinian and an American-Canadian dual citizen are dead. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has described the incident as unintended and tragic, the military expressing its sincere sorrow and promising to investigate. Jonathan Savage, Fox News. The first no-hitter of the 2024 Major League Baseball season goes to Ronel Blanco after he led the Astros to a 10 to nothing win over the Toronto Blue Jays last night at Minute Maid Park. Blanco struck out seven batters without allowing a single hit on 105 total pitches. Your opening bell report on 93 WIBC brought to you by Absolute Wealth Management, LLC. A very bad start to the day. The Dow was off 348 points at the opening bell to 39,550. The Nasdaq down 217 to 18,279. And the S&P 500 is down 44 to 5,251. I'm Kirk Darling on the level, on the go, and on WIBC.com. According to a 2023 Gallup poll, 71% of non-retired adults are worried about retirement saving. At Howard Bailey Financial, we don't believe retiring with confidence should be guesswork. 
In fact, our mission is to help you gain clarity and purpose and elevate meaning in your life through personal and practical financial strategies. That's why we provide our Retire with Purpose Toolkit at no cost. In it, you'll find valuable information on minimizing taxes, maximizing Social Security, and building a retirement income you won't outlive. To receive your complimentary toolkit, text CLARITY to 866-482-9559. Take a step toward a more confident retirement with Howard Bailey Financial and text CLARITY to 866-482-9559. This endorsement was not provided by a client of Howard Bailey. This individual was compensated for this endorsement. For more information, visit howardbailey.com slash TS1. You're listening to The Kendall and Casey Show on 93 WIPC. During an emergency, who would you turn to? Well, according to voters, people believe that Donald Trump would be better able to handle a nuclear emergency, stay alert during meetings, and also remember the name (laughs) of other world leaders more so than Joe Biden. Isn't this... This is shaping up now. While it's been, it's like I think there's voter exhaustion Mm -hmm. with Trump and Biden. I mean, I think it's clear. Polling shows this, et cetera. This is shaping up for those of us who are really into politics to be the one of the most fascinating elections ever, because what you have is a sitting president who everyone knows is a dithering dolt who doesn't know his head from his backside who has done immense harm to society, and they, the public at large has zero, I mean Z-E-R-O, zero confidence in. Yet, the race, while Trump is winning in almost every single poll, is still relatively close because while everybody knows this about the guy in the office, mm-hmm. they so despise the other guy's personality yeah. and who he is as a human being that it's still up in the air and who they're going to vote for. This is a fascinating study in like human psychology and human behavior because you know, everybody's telling you, we know the guy that is currently there has done immense harm to our existence. And we know he's totally incapable of doing the actual job. Yet we so personally dislike the other guy, we're really having a hard time making up our minds. So they also asked, who do you think could get through a one-hour meeting with Putin? And the answer was Trump no on doubt. top. But, I mean, think about this. It's like, you know, you imagine the Oval Office, and then there's a red telephone on the desk ringing at 3 in the morning. And who do you want picking up that line? Somebody's got to go wake up Joe Biden and hope that he realizes where he is and that he's president and that he's got to work. Or there's the other guy who seems absolutely off his rocker sometimes, like he might do something completely crazy. You don't know what he's going to say to the person on the other end of that red line. Isn't the crazy thing about Trump, though, that his probably best thing he was best at was foreign policy? Mm -hmm. If you were to look at in the era of Reagan, post post Reagan, he is by far the most successful president, regardless of party, in terms of foreign policy. When you're talking about no new wars, you're talking about military strength, you're talking about peace accords in the Middle East, you're talking about gaining footholds and traction with foreign dictators that have been menaces and problems to this country for generations. Trump checked all those boxes. And I think a big part of it is the fact that people believe the guy is insane. And when you believe somebody, it's Mel Gibson with the gun in the mouth and the lethal weapon. If you believe the guy's going to pull the trigger, Mm -hmm. you don't want to mess around with that. And there's a lot of those people who believe Trump will pull the trigger. And here's another poll where RFK was not included. And so he was on CNN and he was saying that he's a spoiler for all of this. And I saw a quick poll that said since he... RFK Jr. announced his VP running mate of Nicole Shanahan. He has gone down one point, and that went to Donald Trump. Oh, what did? Where'd you hear that, Casey? Yeah. Uh, let's talk, let's talk about that for a second before we play this guy who his voice is like nails on a chalkboard. Not his fault, I know, but let's just face it: he's running for public office. Yeah. So it's all fair game. We told you this was going to happen because she is incredibly uninspiring. And the whole premise of the Kennedy campaign had to be: you need to be inspired to vote against your your societal norms. You need to be you need to feel compelled that the country is in such a bad shape and I am so compelling as an individual that you are going to be willing to break with whatever your norm actually is. And the first 
opening salvo from him is to pick just some run-of-the-mill, lefty, super-connected business person. Mm -hmm. Who in the world does that inspire, Casey? I'm surprised he hasn't gone down more. I think he will over time yeah. because she doesn't she doesn't offer anything that captivates the imagination whatsoever. No, and she's going to be a work in progress, too. This is somebody who's going to have to have on-the-job training if they were to win. You and I have had this conversation about if you were a candidate, what would you rather have? Would you rather have money or earned media? And I, and this is just my personality and the way I'm wired, I would take the earned media every mm -hmm. single time. Well, that means you're saying something interesting that right. other people want to parrot. There's a reason Trump, one of the reasons Trump totally blitzed the field in 2015, in, the, in 2016 on the Republican side, was all the earned media he had. He was everywhere. And every time you you every time he was on, you had to watch because he, this guy's going to say something outlandish. There's a reason that that, that diversity debate that Rittenauer and I did was probably far more tuned into between radio and YouTube and the podcast and everything else than that debate that was had, you know, the same night, which is because what the hell was Rob going to say? Yeah. R the stuff I was saying was way more interesting and entertaining than the same repetitive talking points than those tired old people on the stage who say and tell you absolutely nothing. It You have to lean into the freak show in politics. You have to give people a little bit of, you know, the dinner theater. You have to inspire people to want to part. Because if you say something good, mm -hmm. if you say enough outlandish things and you have enough interesting and viable in there, people will catch on to the interesting and viable, even if they're tuning in for the outlandish. And this Kennedy pick, it's like, what... What compelling re you you are running against the system and you picked a system person That's to be exactly. your vice president. That's it exactly. Well, he picked her wallet is what he picked. So he says that Biden is a bigger threat to democracy than Donald Trump, and that is because the Biden administration wants to censor political speech and undermine the First Amendment. But do you really believe that when people talk about the threat to democracy that Trump poses, do you really think that that is is an equal yeah, evil I mean, to Biden. I, I mean, listen. I can make the argument that President Biden is a much worse threat to democracy. He went on to say that Biden is the first president in history that's used federal agencies to censor his political rival. Uh, but we got to stop him on that because this is a guy, and he's on camera doing it. Mm -hmm. want, wanted to jail people who disagree with him on the environment. And Kennedy not going to be able to run from that. That clip is out there, and, and people have seen it. This guy is a guy who wanted to put people in jail who disagree with his insane environmental views. So I'm not going to be lectured on any, by him about anyone who he thinks is a threat to democracy. Again, we're not a democracy, but whatever. Uh, I'm not going to be lectured about anything for a guy who wanted to put me in jail because I don't agree in his view, his lunatic view on the environment. That's that. Look, all this stuff's going to come out about him, and this is why when he picks some am amateur hour person who brings nothing to the table other than her access to money, they're not going to be able to defend him. That stuff is going to come out on him. People are going to see it, and uh, he's just... What a what a bad pick. What a bad pick, Casey. Okay, so the governor of Maryland has warned that the bridge collapse will have massive impact on the U.S. economy uh, across multiple industries and for a long time. They did make some progress yesterday. They got a big piece off that cargo ship, and now they're making some lanes for other cargo ships to pass through and get to the port. But they're still saying that it's, it's going to have a massive impact on not not only Maryland, but the entire East Coast and parts of the country. Now, I noticed gas went up today, and I found cheap gas somewhere, so I went ahead and filled up. I risked life and limb to do that under cover of darkness mm -hmm. uh, because it was so much cheaper. Is that tied? Do we know? Is that tied into any? That just seems like a big old coincidence that gas went up like 50 cents a gallon. Just coincidentally I right mean, after this happened? I'm not saying it is. Well, I'm, you also had the Indiana gas tax increase. Well, yeah, that was two cents. Okay, so there's two of it we give to the Indiana Republican Party. <laughs> so they're to blame for two of the 50, but where mm -hmm. did the other... Uh, where the other 48 come from? Hey, by the way, though, I forgot to tell you, because I I do this, and it's a total flaw of mine, and I it's because I'm an inconsiderate jerk, and I just, this is the way I operate. I will schedule things and then not tell Casey until right before we're supposed to do them, yeah. and this happens all what the time. What did you do? Well, the oil guy, Bill Herrick's going to come later this week, and we're going to oh, tape cool. something with him, because he's going to tell us what's going on with the oil stuff. So I for, it just dawned on me that I forgot to tell you that. As I we're talking about oil and gas prices. I did schedule that. So uh, It's okay. I scheduled something, and I haven't told you about it. Oh, either. hot dang. <laughs>
Are, is it people Friday, popping? Is it on, girls popping out of a cake? What is no, it? No, no. On Friday, we're going to have an eye doctor come on and talk about safety for your eyes how with is, the solar eclipse. You, how? How? I know that's right exciting. up your alley. Oh my goodness! I can't wait. <laughs> but officials have said that uh, they're going to be tapping into billions of dollars in emergency federal dollars to remove the wreckage to allow new ship tra- traffic to come through, rebuild that bridge as quickly as possible. And now insurers are saying that they're going to be stepping in to cover the cost. Costs. However, the owner and the manager of that cargo ship that rammed into Baltimore's Francis Scott Key Bridge has now filed a petition in court seeking to limit their legal liability. Oh, of course, right? So we're going to fight this out in court. In the meantime, you've got Biden saying, we're going to pay for it. And then you've got Janet Yellen rolling that back saying, wait a minute, we're not paying for our, this. Our government is a disaster, Casey. It is a duh disaster. But in the meantime... Who does part of this fall on? You would think that the transportation yeah. secretary would get involved, right? Because a ship right? is transportation, right? Right, yeah, absolutely. right. Okay, well, here's Mayor Pete saying he may not run for office again. I know when a lot of people see you on television these days, they, they may still think to themselves, oh, I wonder if he still wants the big job one day. No, now that you've been that closer ever. to it, working alongside a president, is it still something you aspire to? Well, I certainly have new perspective on just how demanding that job is. <laughs> Watching President Biden uh, deal with so many concerns, challenges, and, and opportunities for mm-hmm. this country. And I'm, I'm proud to be a small part mm-hmm. of, of the big team that yeah. helps him get that well, done. I sincerely don't know uh, what uh, uh, whether I will run for elected office of any kind again. <laughs> what I do know uh, is that I've been asked to take on a big job. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm honored and humbled to do it. Uh, it's hard. <laughs> it's rewarding. And it's taken about 110% of what I have to give right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, here's the problem, Casey. That guy, <laughs> that guy really didn't ask the question correctly, and I'd like to take a stab at re-asking that question. I think okay. I might have got a better answer. Yeah. All right, are you ready? Yeah. Okay, here we go. Look here, fat. <laughs> You've been a complete disaster at this job. Everybody knows you were totally unqualified for this position to begin with. Mm-hmm. You totally sucked at the job you had before, which was the mayor of a city, which mm-hmm. it was a total train wreck. We all know why you actually got picked for this position to begin mm-hmm. with. Mm-hmm. So now that you have lived up to the buffoon and competent expectations we all had for you, are you ready to pull the plug on politics, or are you going to try to grift even more going further? <laughs> How about that? I like that question. What's he going to do, retire in Traverse City? He's going to run a local Dairy Queen up there. (laughs) It is Kendall and Casey on 93 WIBC. Coming up on Tony Katz today, Trump is able to post the bond. So what happens to him next? That's after the news at noon on 93 WIBC. UniversalWindowsDirect.com. UniversalWindowsDirect.com. That is where you can find some of the greatest darn windows in the entire world. And listen to this deal If you decide to buy, yeah, all you got to do right now is call 317-659-7574, 317-659-7574. And for every two windows you buy at Universal Windows Direct, you're going to get the next two free. Buy two, get two. Buy four, get four. Buy 20, you get 20. There's no limit. Yeah, and again, all you got to do is call 317-659-7574. Schedule your free in-home estimate today, and for every two windows you buy, you're going to get the next two free. Oh, and get this. If you say, hey, Rob Kendall from WIBC told me to call, they're going to take at Universal Windows Direct an additional $250 off your project. But you got to tell them Rob Kendall told you to call. 317-659-7574. See it all for yourself. UniversalWindowsDirect.com. Um, Congresswoman Sparks will be ready for your interview soon. It seems pretty intense in there. Yeah, kind of crazy. Maybe I'll take some time before the interview to Google Victoria Sparks and learn a little more about her. Uh, whoa, have you seen this article? One aide calling the lawmaker's workplace behavior manic? Victoria Sparts was number one on Legistorm's list of worst bosses based on high turnover rates. Says she, quote, avoided firing aides and instead bullied them until they left. And the story is based on interviews with half a dozen former staffers. Yikes. Sparts called staff morons and idiots. I get this. Victoria Sparts says her working style is, quote, not for everyone. Well, it's not for me.
I think I'll pass on this interview. I'm Chuck Goodrich. I'm running for Congress, and I approve this message. Paid for by Go with Chuck Goodrich Committee. Attention seniors, you're invited to the grand opening of Centerwell Pendleton Pike. Centerwell offers primary care centered on seniors. So come celebrate on Wednesday, April 10th at 8101 Pendleton Pike, Suite E in Indianapolis from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Enjoy food, music, and more at this free community event. Plus, tour the new doctor's office and meet the care team. For details, call 317-648-5581 or visit meetcenterwellindiana.com. Did you know if you have water, storm, or fire damage, the first step is on you? Yikes. It's your responsibility to mitigate damages. Mitigate? Yeah, that's a fancy word for call Michelis. They'll take it from there, from boarding up, cleaning up, and fixing up, to getting you squared up with your insurance company, which is a whole other mess you can avoid. Make it Michelis. Call 844-FIX-INDY. If you see me stopped in the McDonald's drive-thru, just staring at the menu with my what-should-I-order face, don't interrupt. It's the most important decision I'll make all day. Decide on delicious with buy one, get one for a dollar. Now with the hot and spicy McChicken, McDouble, or small fries. Price and participation may vary. Cannot be combined with any other offer or combo meal. Valid for product of equal or lesser value. was a love letter, but now they're saying that she was coerced into writing it. 12 minutes in front of 10, you're listening to Kendall and Casey on 93 WIBC. So the lady who is accusing Vince McMahon of sexual abuse apparently wrote a love letter, and I just want to read a little excerpt from it. After almost three years together, it's like my life isn't even real to me unless you're there and in it, and I'm sharing it all with you. Yeah, what's a big deal? I've been written that many times by women. Mm-hmm. Is it why is this a big deal? So her lawyers were saying that she was coerced into writing oh. that to Vince McMahon. Yeah. Uh, okay. So the Vince McMahon story to me now. Look, I'm a total homer on this because I grew up watching and loving professional wrestling, and uh, the stuff that Vince McMahon created was a big part of my childhood. I don't watch it anymore, but it's uh, look. I'm a total. My interest in this is total Homersville, and so I don't, like, pretend that's not a thing. Um, the Vince McMahon thing to me is fascinating, though, because Vince McMahon is sort of like the modern era's Walt Disney in the sense that he created this pretend universe that millions of people spanning generations have found um, joy and friendship and companionship in and it isn't you know you can whatever you want about pro wrestling the fact is he built a multi-gajillion dollar company the guy became a billionaire it is one of the more powerful entities especially now with its merger um now that this tko company that they merged with ufc it's one of the more powerful companies in in this country now and the idea that that I struggle with this because the idea now every time I watch an old wrestling video Mm -hmm. or whatever and he's a part of it you realize Vince McMahon was a horrifically awful human being Mm -hmm. now did is Vince McMahon some human sex trafficker who would I don't know about all that but it's un when you look at the totality of allegations made against him some of them which have been verified some of them that there's strong circumstantial evidence too and then when you take it with things that have been verified just an absolute piece of human garbage. And yeah. so I struggle with this because this guy is accused of doing some really, really horrific things. And so how do you square that with, I can't unmemory my childhood. I can't, you know, extract that from the things that that, the, and the fun and the joy that that, that that brought me. Yet it's done on the shoulders of a guy who's a complete scumbag. Yeah, it really does taint all the memories. So his lawyers were saying that this is revisionist history and that no one can coerced her into writing that letter. She wrote it on her own accord and that nowhere in all of her other complaints does she mention being coerced into writing love letters to him. Well, look, oftentimes the truth lies somewhere in the middle. And in this case, if the truth is even in the middle, it's horrific and awful. And I mean, it's just very bad what this woman went through. 
he some of the stuff, and we talked about this when the allegations came out that he's accused of doing. We can't even say on these, or we have to really clean it up when we say on these mm -hmm. airwaves because we would be subject to rules and regulations. But my my goodness, Casey, it's certainly it's certainly if you know Vince McMahon, like if you have done any research on Vince McMahon, um, it certainly reads like a letter that somebody probably was. How, maybe we'll say encouraged to mm -hmm. put pen to paper on. She called him my best friend, my love, and my everything. Oh. And possibly she was trauma bonded to well, him. And that's why. Look, so my for, love, so for my people, everything. People who don't know the background on this, apparently, allegedly, this woman had gone through some horrific life event. I think her parents had passed away or something like that. I don't know the exact circumstance to it. I don't think that's even come out yet. But. She was had gone through this horrific life event. She somehow, though, was living in this apartment in New York City that Vince McMahon is living in. So she clearly wasn't, you know, in line at a soup kitchen. Vince McMahon is not living, you know, in a Motel 8 somewhere. But she's living in this, what by all accounts is a very nice apartment. She somehow gets introduced to him. Mm -hmm. And he then falls, you know, head over heels. I don't think Vince McMahon has loved ever loved anything other than himself and right. his company. So I wouldn't say in love, but the reflection smitten, in the mirror. Yes, yeah, smitten with mm -hmm. her, and then immediately begins, if you believe the allegations, like manipulating her and taking advantage of her, and then begins the sexual, physical, mm -hmm. and psychological um, ab abuse that takes place takes place uh, allegedly and then he gets her job in the company and then he's doing all sorts of horrific things to her and with her and having other company employees do horrific and terrible awful things it's like you couldn't even i don't know look anything can be made up but the um, the imagination you would need to even orchestrate the things that she is accusing mm -hmm. him of doing mm -hmm. is simply unbelievable it Casey. sounds to me just like it's textbook narcissistic behavior i mean you start with the love bombing and then he starts with the grooming and then the abuse yeah but here's the thing okay she clearly there's not a, there's never been an allegation that like oh my gosh he he like she it sounds like in the beginning was a willing participant in the mm -hmm. in the relationship well because she probably didn't know him know him know but him but this but this is what and this is ultimately if it goes to trial look i don't think this thing is, i think it's i don't think it's gonna go to trial i think it'll probably be settled i think the tko company even though vince is no longer a part of that he's just a stockholder i think they're gonna have a profound interest because many of their officers are alleged to have known different things or people who are involved with the company are alleged to have known mm -hmm. different various things so i think there's gonna be all sorts of pressure to settle and she'll get a huge financial payout but if it does go to a jury that's what they're gonna have to work through is how much of this was a willing participant who was enjoying. Because don't forget, the Trevor... Ba Let's go back to the Trevor Bauer thing. He right. was the pitcher for the Los Angeles Dodgers. Mm -hmm. He was accused of sexually brutalizing this woman. It then obviously came out that she was really into, into that sort of behavior. The text messages appeared to exonerate him. His career is over. Right. He can't play in the majors anymore, even though it appears he did nothing wrong. It was a, a, a consensual, sexual, rough sex relationship. The truth came out too late for him. Right, so you can't... You can't jump the gun on this, even though the allegations against McMahon, Vince McMahon are awful, and there is a decades-long set of women who are making horrible allegations against him. You do need, really, the truth to come up before you jump to a definitive, here's exactly what happened, because the Trevor Bauer thing showed us mm -hmm. people can. There are twist, twisted, sick, weird people in the world who will make up horrific stories to try to take down people for no reason at all it is kendall and casey on 93 wibc and joining us uh in just a few minutes we've got nikki kelly from the indiana capital chronicle so we're gonna get into this whole thing with the the fec with that colossal fine against mike braun one of the largest mm -hmm. fines in the history of the fec and so we're gonna ask her how big a deal is this can this impact the governor's race plus she has been trying for a year now to get information on todd rokita's legal issues right and she is getting stonewalled at every turn we're going to hear from her coming up. It's Kendall and Casey on 93 WIBC. Jefferson Shreve stepped up to fight when no one else would. He put it all on the line. And the liberals smeared him for it with ads like this. Donald Trump. And Jefferson Shreve. He's an original supporter of Donald Trump. They attacked Shreve for being a conservative. Jefferson Shreve, an A rating from the NRA. Attacked him for being a loyal Republican. Look who was there. 
Jefferson Shreve. He was proud to be on the Trump campaign and proud of his own A rating from the NRA. All because Shreve would get tough, back the blue, and stop the crime. But we don't have to accept their lawlessness at our border, in our suburbs, in our state. Because Jefferson Shreve is running for Congress, and he's a fighter for law, order, and a secure border. Jefferson Shreve for Congress. I'm Jefferson Shreve, and I approve this message. Paid for by Shreve for Congress. What if you could build a six-figure retirement income with almost half the money saved? You heard that right. Get a discount on your retirement, creating a six-figure income with 40% less than traditional 401ks and mutual funds. Hi, I'm Brett Kitchen, best-selling author, executive producer, and star in a brand new Hollywood documentary called The Retirement Deception. In this film, we traveled over 20,000 miles interviewing real Americans who've retired successfully with a great lifestyle and peace of mind. They share their stories on how they get more retirement income with the same dollar saved and the money's never at risk if the market crashes. That's right. If the market crashes 30%, you lose nothing. Even the super wealthy are shifting money to this new strategy because it increases their retirement income or can allow them to stop working years sooner. So if you're over 50 and want a bigger, better retirement with less money saved, call to talk to a specialist and get a free copy of this brand new movie at 800-486-9595. This is a $30 value, but when you call today, you can get it completely free. I'll even cover shipping and handling. No credit card required. Call right now. 1-800-486-9595. 9595. That's 1 800 486 9595. Again, that's 1 800 486 9595. Did you know one of the best investments you can make? It's in yourself. At My Computer Career, in just a few months, you could start your new career in the high demand, recession resistant field of information technology. Isn't it time you invest in you and start a career in networking, cybersecurity, AI, or upskill to boost your current IT career? So get the ROI you deserve at My Computer Career. No experience experience necessary. Start now at mycomputercareer.edu. Financial aid is available for qualified students, including the GI Bill. At Uline, the prevailing opinion is, if you don't live it, you don't believe it. The people at Uline believe in hard work, and they live it by being there 24-7 to answer your call, having 41,000 items in stock, and offering same-day shipping from 12 locations across North America. Business owners, sellers, buyers, shippers, and packers believe it. Uline is the hardworking, dependable source for your shipping and industrial supplies. Visit Uline.com. I occasionally have nerve discomfort in my hands, so the things I love to do... Let's play something, Grandma! ...became difficult as I got older. If you have occasional stabbing and burning in your hands and feet, try Nervive Nerve Relief. Nervive's clinically studied dose of alpha-lipoic acid reduces occasional nerve discomfort in as little as seven days with continued daily use. Say yes to healthy nerves with Nervive Nerve Relief. These statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. This product is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Don't stress about plumbing repairs. Call L.D. Smith for honest advice and a free second opinion on any estimate. L.D. Smith Plumbing! A dirty stinking honest. Coming up in two minutes, some of the side effects of severe weather and why you could be seeing more later today. Plus, where IMPD says they've made an arrest in a fatal shooting and the wrong place at the wrong time for these people in Muncie yesterday. That and more coming up from the Technology Recyclers Studios after Fox News Radio at the top of the hour. I'm Kurt Darling. You're listening to 93 WYBC, WYBC HD1 Indianapolis. It's 10 o'clock. An unintended strike on innocent people. I'm Chris Foster, Fox News. Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu confirms a military airstrike in Gaza, killing seven people working with the American food aid charity World Central Kitchen, one a dual American-Canadian citizen. The charity says the movements of the convoy had been coordinated with the Israeli army. It's now suspended operations, and ships carrying around 240 tonnes of aid to Gaza are turning back to port in Cyprus. Fox's Jonathan Savage. Hunter Biden's request to have tax charges dismissed is rejected by a federal judge in L.A. Abby Lowell, the lawyer for President Biden's son, argued, among other things, prosecutors caved to pressure from Republicans. Hunter Biden has pleaded not guilty to charges that accuse him of failing to pay $1.4 million in taxes between 2016 and 2019. During that time, Biden is accused of spending millions on drugs, escorts, and fancy cars. The trial is scheduled to begin June 20th with jury selection. In Washington, Ryan Schmelz, 
Fox News. Former President Trump posts a bond to prevent the seizure of assets to cover a half billion dollar business fraud judgment against him in New York. Trump posted that bond in taking the truth social saying this, quote, I've just posted a $175 million bond with the sadly failing and very troubled state of New York. The case was a fabricated election interference con job so bad for New York where businesses are fleeing and violent crime is flourishing. Now what comes next is Trump's appeal of the full judgment in this civil case. His attorney, Alina Haba, saying this, quote, he looks forward to vindicating his rights on appeal and overturning this unjust verdict. Fox's Griff Jenkins, at least 25 people are killed in a fire during renovations on a nightclub in Istanbul, Turkey. America's listening to Fox News. 93 WIPC Mobile News. On the level. On the go. What the weather has caused. Radar is clear for now. It is 61 and cloudy downtown. I'm Kirk Darling. Here's what's trending at 10.02. A small sinkhole opened up in Whiteland near the high school. That's on Whiteland Road just off of US 31. Police say the sinkhole is about five, about five feet deep and three feet wide and was likely caused because of flooding from this morning's storms. Speaking of, more severe weather is expected later this afternoon. So the bulk of it will be east of us in Ohio, but it looks like all severe weather hazards are possible today so we have large hail possible strong severe wind gusts and even some tornadoes matt ekhoff with the national weather service there was already a tornado confirmed on the ground in evansville early this morning which caused some damage to buildings and homes shots fired calls came in to police around 6 30 in the belmont neighborhood on the southwest side last night uh, while officers were in, you know uh, responding to the scene uh, the, the call was upgraded to an actual person shot. IMPD officer William Young, he says officers got to the home and found the man dead on the front porch. And there was then a SWAT situation at another home nearby, but no one was inside. IMPD says that they have made an arrest since then. Three people were hurt after a small private plane crashed in Delaware County Monday. Donnie Burgess has more. The pilot was the only person on board when the plane crashed on the Cardinal Greenway Monday morning around 1030. The plane had come from Bloomington. Two bystanders who were on the Greenway, which is a walk rail, were also injured during this accident. Delaware County Airport Director Tim Beatty says the pilot was trapped and had to be pulled out. The FAA and National Transportation Safety Board will determine the cause and circumstances. Donnie Burgess, 93 WIBC Mobile News. Indiana State takes on Utah tonight in the final four of the NIT. Tip-off inside Hinkle Fieldhouse at 7 o'clock. If the Sycamores win, they will get either Georgia or Seton Hall, both of whom will face each other tonight at 9.30 at Hinkle. I'm Kirk Darling on the level on the go and on WYBC.com. Do you get sinus infections, congestion, sinus pressure and pain above your eyes, below your eyes, sinus headaches? You've gone to the doctor, you've visited urgent care over and over again, and it's always the same thing. Oh, uh, I know. Let's try antibiotics and nasal sprays but the sinus infections keep coming back. The good news? Relief is possible. How? A minimally invasive procedure done in the office of Indianapolis Sinus Center called balloon sinuplasty. Imagine the relief of not having to deal with your sinus infections anymore. Set an appointment today with Indianapolis Sinus Center and find out if balloon sinuplasty is the solution for you. Call 317-528-528. 9650. 317-528-9650. That's 317-528-9650. You're listening to Rob Kendall. When we talk about sending money somewhere, mm -hmm. we're talking about printing the money because we have no money. And Casey Daniels. My government would never lie to me, would they? On 93 WIPC. Oh my gosh, Casey, there's so much going on with Indiana politics and government. Especially with the governor's race. Oh man, 93 WIBC, it is the Kendall and Casey Show. I'm Rob Casey's here. Let's find out. Let's go to one of the best of the business. You know her from the Indiana Capitol Chronicle, the great Nikki Kelly. All right, Nikki Kelly, so Mike Braun gets this gigantic fine from the FEC. We went into this a little bit yesterday. I think this is kind of a big deal. You guys had an expose on it at the Capitol Chronicle. What say you? Yeah, I mean, it, it It goes back to 2018 and some <clears throat> reporting that wasn't correct on 
loans that he received as a candidate. You know, there are rules about if you're going to get a loan, you have to say what terms. You know, you can't be getting, so to speak, special treatment. Um, and finally, you know, it worked through the FEC system, and they came out with the second largest fine ever for a senatorial campaign. So, uh, yeah, obviously Mike Brown's opponents are making hay on it. I think we'll probably see an ad or two. And um, to be clear, his response is basically that was our former treasurer's fault. So we shouldn't be, you know, basically it's not, not our fault. Yeah, so the, let's talk about that for a second because, and Nikki and I went into this. So I've worked for a U.S. Senate campaign. Oregon Marlin Stutzman ran for U.S. Senate. And it seems to me like when you've got the amount of money Braun has coming in that you would have more than just one kind of rogue or, I guess, incompetent or I don't know what treasure making the choices. Should, it just seems like they kind of just pass it off onto this one guy, and it's like, shouldn't you have more of a system of check and balances when you're talking tens of millions of dollars coming in and out? Yeah, I would think so. I mean, I think the bigger issue is, you know, is that the way he's going to govern, yes. you know, basically say, oh, well, you know, that was my cabinet head. That, <laughs> that, you know, I mean, I, that's it's a similar position. And so I think that's what a lot of people are taking from it is that, you know, he didn't own up and they're still trying to figure out if that former treasurer can pay the fine. And and, you know, they say that that settlement agreement makes clear the former treasurer is at fault. It technically doesn't. It just says that the respondent says they're at fault. I don't think that <laughs> really made a ruling on who is at fault because to them it doesn't matter. The, the actual campaign committee is at fault, and they are the ones getting assessed the fine. So Braun's in the middle of this six-way race for governor, and you had mentioned that the other opponents will make hay with it. Do you think that this does anything to the voter? Do they care? Does it mean anything? Hmm. I think a lot of people maybe have already made up their minds on this, but, you know, I think it would cause a few people to maybe take take heed or pause a little to think about their discussion because, you know, the FEC is a bipartisan entity. You know, Republicans had to vote for that, too, along with Democrats. And so, you know, I think it's a it's definitely a fair thing to to use in your consideration of the candidate you want to support. Nikki Kelly's our guest over at the Indiana Capitol Chronicle. Find it at indianacapitalchronicle.com. Yeah, one more thing before we get off this. And I think you touched on the thing that was the big issue for us yesterday, Nikki, which is, the fact that they're passing it off to someone else, it maybe gives you some insight into how Braun might govern, and that's maybe the takeaway from all of this, which is, you're right, what if there's some big issue, like this is a huge issue, is he going to just simply blame it on a cabinet head instead of accepting responsibility? Yeah, I mean, that's that's a fair question um, after, you know, seeing how this was handled. I mean, he, as the candidate himself, took no responsibility for for what happened, they said, look, we gave all the correct information to the treasurer and he didn't fill out the forms right, I guess. Um, so he uh, definitely did not just own up and try to move on. Yeah, my mind is blown that they're trying to act like you've got a multi-million dollar operation here and there's not anybody else doing attorneys or anything, Casey, doing any sort of check and balance on this. So, Nikki, they said that they're committed to ensuring full compliance and transparency and all future financial reporting. Do you think that for this campaign... They're, you know, crossing the T's, dotting all the I's, double checking, or do you think it's being run the same way? Well, I mean, it is two different, you know, the state campaign going through the IED is a lot different than the FEC. The FEC, I think, has much more specific rules on the federal level and a lot more things you can and can't do. So I think on the state level, it's already a bit easier. Um, so I doubt they'd change their method too much. Uh, Nikki Kelly's our guest. Find her over at IndianaCapitalChronicle.com. I want to spend some time. Uh, you have a very interesting piece up at the Capitol Chronicle about how hard it has been to get information on how much the Attorney General for the state of Indiana, Todd Rokita, has spent defending himself with this deal with the with the disciplinary commission, his law license potentially on the line. And you went in just really in depth on how hard it has been to get information. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. 
Yeah, I mean, I think as a reporter, we we always get a lot of people on Twitter or in your inboxes saying, why don't you just ask this? Why aren't you asking these questions? And this was an example to show that, you know, we're asking a lot of questions that we don't tell you that we're asking. And they go on for a year. And so this went back to February of 2023 when it first became known that um, he was paying an outside law contract to defend his, to susp- to defend his law license. Um, but it's way complicated. You know, you send an email asking about that contract, and you want to talk about why and how much. There's no response. There's no response. There's no response. So then we decided to go around the AG's office to the Indiana Comptroller's office, and we asked for the invoices behind that contract so you could see. Um, the problem is it gets real complicated because this particular contract it's been amended six times it goes back four years it includes a lot of other stuff than just that case and so you can't you can't parse what is being spent on for instance the caitlin bernard medical licensure case versus todd rakita's disciplinary commission case and so we were hoping those invoices would help us but when we got them they were just completely redacted like everything on them were just black marks. And so um, we filed a public access uh, complaint and, and there was a, there were a few little jabs um, about it, but basically the public access counselor said that he doesn't have the legal authority to review those unredacted invoices. So he can't technically say they're violating, but he said, look, there's a high amount of redaction He encouraged the attorney general to revisit it with a, quote, lighter touch on the redaction. (laughs) But, you know, that's been going on for, you know, more than a year to get, you know, was a simple thing. Now there's a second contract and a second disciplinary case, and we still don't know what we spent on the first one. Yeah, so Nikki Kelly, this is what's interesting to me is it's one thing for people, the government does something and the people disagree with it. And and people are going to, reasonable people are going to have disagreements. But what we're talking about here is we don't have the ability, and you guys have been at it for a year, but we don't have the ability to understand how our money's even being spent. And I think that's what's the hang-up for a lot of people saying, wait a second, Mr. Attorney General, you're spending our money, and it appears you're going out of your way to prevent us from finding out how our money's even being spent. Yeah, when you have a contract that encompasses, you know, five or six different cases— and including it started on a federal case that isn't even existing right. anymore, but that's what they keep filing these invoices under. And so you, you can't discern what is going where, and they could easily clear it up with just sending an email that says, you know, so far of the 400000 we've paid to, you know, this law firm, X has gone to this case, X has gone to this case, you know. But they they haven't done that. Yeah, and why would you? That's the bigger question is, why would you care if it's all a good expense, if it's all stuff that's been for the benefit of the state of Indiana? Why wouldn't you just say, look, hey, we spent this, and this is why we spent it. Here's the result we got for the taxpayers, and then here you go, media, have have a nice day. I mean, if you didn't have anything to hide, why would you be working so hard, it appears, to hide information? Yeah, I mean, I definitely think they're causing themselves more pain than they're preventing So the easy question is, how much of the taxpayers' dollars are being spent to defend Todd Rokita's law license? But, Nikki, I wanted to ask you, because you touched on it in your article, former Attorney General Curtis Hill, he paid for his own legal defense. Were you able to find out how much he paid out to defend himself? I didn't actually look that directly. Um, Obviously, I think part of that was through campaign funds, so that's somewhere in those records. I mean, to be fair, I'm not even I'm not even arguing that it's inappropriate to be paying this with taxpayer dollars. In Curtis Hill's case, that was an after hours issue at a party. It it literally had nothing to do with his official duty. So I think it was appropriate for him to pay or personally or through his campaign. But in this case, you know, whether we liked it or not, he you know, Todd Rakita was speaking about an issue that his office was investigating and so it clearly was an official duty. So again, I'm not arguing that's inappropriate, but I still think, you know, taxpayers deserve to know how much is going where. You can read the entire piece over at the Indiana Capital Chronicle, IndianaCapitalChronicle.com. Nikki Kelly, you're the best. Thank you. 
All right. Have a good day. Yeah, you too. You're listening to Kendall and Casey on 93 WIBC. Casey, how would you like to get a 13% bonus when you invest your money? Not only do you get a 13% bonus, Rob, you'll also get an annual return that's averaged 7% a year for the past 10 years. Hello, it's Kendall and Casey. Discover how you can get an upfront 13% bonus, plus a competitive annual return that's averaged 7% a year for the past 10 years. Learn more from the retirement guy we trust, Bill Demery, right here in Indy. Just call 317. 317- 932-9912. This is such a no-brainer for me. Right. You get an upfront 13% bonus plus PLUS, a competitive annual return that's averaged 7% a year for the past 10 years. And it's backed by one of the largest insurance companies in the world. So call Bill now. 317-932-9912. That number, 317-932-9912. Past performance is no guarantee of future returns. Like magic, it appears in the sky. A rainbow. Somewhere over that rainbow lurks not bluebirds or dreams. Hidden behind that beauty is trouble. Get a cone tornado right there. Don't be fooled. Tornado on the ground. Confirmed tornado on the ground. Confirmed tornadoes. Oh my gosh, look at it. Oh my God. This spring, depend on your severe weather station. Baseball size hill. 93 WIPC. I like to be active, and as you get older, I know it because I am older. You're more prone to injury, and I could not get rid of the pain. QC Kinetics patient Diane Richardson talking about how a hiking injury left her in awful pain. No one wants to live in pain. I certainly don't want to live in pain. I don't have time for pain. Diane had heard about regenerative medicine, so she called QC Kinetics and started treatment right away. And the results were incredible. I couldn't believe it. I honestly was skeptical, but the pain went from a 10 to a 0. QC Kinetics is the nation's leader in using natural biologics healing properties from your own body to restore and repair damaged joint tissue. There's no surgery, no drugs, and no downtime. The result was phenomenal. I mean, I was not feeling any pain. I'm able to do everything that I want to do. If you have pain from arthritis or injury, this may be the solution you're looking for. Call QC Kinetics now for a free consultation. It was a game changer. Call QC Kinetics, 317-559-PAIN. That's 317-559-PAIN. 317-559-PAIN. Progressive presents 10 things on a food truck owner's to-do list that are harder than getting a commercial auto insurance quote. Stocking the fridge, prepping the stations, finding employees that get along well, finding employees that actually do their job. Looking at you, Gary. Balancing the books, balancing the flavors, having a fresh menu and fresh produce and fresh meat, but never a fresh mouth. But the easiest thing on a small business owner's to-do list? Seeing if you can save on commercial auto insurance. Get a quote in as little as six minutes at ProgressiveCommercial.com. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Coverage subject to policy terms and conditions. This week at Sullivan Hardware and Garden, get 30% off all patio furniture, wicker, Berlin Gardens, poly, cast aluminum, teak, and more. Tired of hearing Rob talk about all the bad news? Time to find your happy place. Turn that frown upside down. It's time for Shining Rainbows with Rob. You will be happy. You will say something positive or else. Uh, first of all, somebody left some these little mini bags of Cheetos yeah. in the kitchen. That's making you happy, isn't it? Did you come in hungry today? Sorry, we flooded the bathroom for five days. Here's a little <laughs> bag of Cheetos. Are we even? <laughs> You've been chomping away. Are your fingertips orange, by the way? No, you can wipe those off pretty quick. Although there really is <laughs> On a your time. shirt? You know, there is a time... I, there is a like, I don't know what would it be like where it encapsulates on your fingertips. So mm-hmm. you really got a time to get those mm-hmm. to get those off. Because after a while, it's a permanent stain. Absolutely, <laughs> you're <laughs> guilty. You've been eating Cheetos, I can tell. Uh, so there's that. Anyway, I saw this. It comes to, from our friends at the Good News Network, mm-hmm. um, and it's about a dog named Hero who saved his owner's life last week. His owner was in some sort of accident. Now, this is up in uh, Alberta, which is Canada, Mm -hmm. and he was in some sort of accident, and this sweet little dog, it's an Akita. Yeah. Which, if you've never seen an Akita before, it's like a 
almost looks like a miniature husky type yeah. of dog. Mm -hmm. You ever seen these dogs before? Mm -hmm. So this little dog was there with his owner, and he fended him off from, like, coyotes and uh, the cold, and then ultimately was able to go what appeared to be, it looks like, attack another dog in order to draw the owner's attention of that dog to him. So that it's, like, literally like Lassie. Lassie, what's... what? Timmy fell down the well. Like mm -hmm. this dog did all of these amazing things um, on its own and was able to draw attention to itself. And then when they chased the dog down, he took them back to the owner who had been in this accident and was was stuck in the in the cold. Yeah, he was like, "Come help my owner." They've set up a GoFundMe page that so far has raised over three thousand dollars to cover the Akita's veterinary bills because. The hero, the dog, being a hero, got injured himself. His name and, was Hero. Yeah. Isn't and, that crazy? And he fulfilled his, you know, his mission. And do you think Bruce would ever do anything like that to save you? Ah! <laughs> Bruce would just be like, just feed me. Yeah. Let me out. Dogs are amazing, though. Uh -huh. Like, we don't, you know, you hear that, we don't deserve dogs. And you really, I mean, look, there are some absolutely incredible dogs out there. And mm -hmm. there are some really really smart dogs and dogs are some of the most loyal creatures among us and i saw this story and i thought well good on that it gives us an opportunity to talk about how wonderful dogs are mm -hmm. can we talk about how gross cicadas are oh no the portion of uh happy rainbows is over <laughs> so let's talk oh, about oh, okay. this brood that's coming to indiana oh, oh, okay so before we get into this many of our longtime listeners when me and the other blonde lady had the show together mm -hmm. will remember my infamous cicada story. Oh, I'm not familiar with this. So, okay. So, uh, what was this? Was this three years ago that there were the maniac cicadas? It was uh, 2007. No, I know no, no, came. no. I'm talking, You're like, talking sooner than that. I'm talking like a couple of years ago. There was yeah, like Brood X. Yeah, Brood X. Thank you. Yeah. Was that 2021? Yeah. Okay. So, this was back. Uh, my, uh, my wife and I were not married. So yes, it would have been 2021. And uh, I used to, many people remember, I used to be a part of the Ben Stein show mm -hmm. podcast. And so it meant that she would go to bed and he it was he's on the West Coast. So it would be, you know, we'd go until 11, 1130 at night. And the cicadas were a thing. And I had a, a house at the time that had several sizable trees around it where these things would fester. And so I did the, I did the podcast. Uh, I was getting ready to go to bed, let Bruce out. Let him back in, and all of a sudden, this thing, it was like, it just shot at me, and I thought I had been hit by a bullet. Like, it almost knocked me over. It was so strong, and I was like, what in the hell is that? And then I realized it was one of those freaking Brood X cicadas, cicadas. and those things yeah. are like out of a horror movie. Mm -hmm. They're like a, like a mini Jeepers Creepers <laughs> type of thing, and this thing, and I've told this story many, many times, mm -hmm. it got... And got into the house. So Gabrielle's in the back sleeping, totally unaware that anything's going on. And I proceeded to be in a one-hour standoff with this cicada because it attached itself. I had a ceiling fan in my living room at the mm -hmm. time. And it attached itself to the ceiling fan. And I had to figure out how to try to get the thing without getting mur attempted homicide <laughs> enacted on me again. And so I spent the next hour just shooting various things at it, like bleach. Uh -huh. I hit it with bleach. I hit it with the, the stuff you spray. Um, like to clean your wood panels mm -hmm. and stuff. Uh, what pledge? Yeah. Uh, I I threw water at it. Uh, and ultimately I stunned it enough that I was able to get up there and whack it on the on the fan. Yeah. With the newspaper, and it it died the miserable death that it deserved. Oh, you were afraid of it, huh? Those things are huge. I've been. I was. It was horrific, Casey. <laughs> They do have big red eyes. Oh, it was they? horrible. Yeah. And it was loud. And somehow my wife just slept through the whole thing. Yeah. She she, she didn't care at all, did she? Uh, so what? What now? What? Uh, I, thought there, I thought that was like once every 100 years they came back. Well, was... for the first time in 221 years, oh, we're no. going to have two cicada broods. And they're going to emerge at oh, the same no. time. Yes. You've got the 17-year brood and also the 13-year brood. Now, the last time this happened... It was 1803, and Thomas Jefferson was president. So it, not often that this happens, but again, we're going to have these two broods come across Indiana at the same time. Big black bodies, big red eyes, They're wings. They're so gross. They're so gross. They're so big. But here's the deal, Rob. You don't need to be afraid because they don't sting, they don't carry diseases, and they don't bite. 
An entomologist from Purdue says that cicadas don't even have the mouth parts to bite. Uh, well, I got something that night. Mm -hmm. I mean, something. And maybe it flew into Something you. horrific happened. I mean, I was convinced I had been hit by a bullet that, mm -hmm. I don't know, some high-ranking Republican official had finally had <laughs> enough of me. And that was it. That was the end for me. They are the noisiest insect. And if you put it on a scale, I thought this was kind of interesting. In Measured in decibels, yeah. you can have a lawnmower a running lawnmower that is three feet away from you, and a cicada will be louder than that. Hey, can we real quick? I know we got to get to a break. Um, can we talk about, since we're talking about cicadas, mm -hmm. something that you don't see anymore? What's that? You don't see lightning bugs anymore. Have you we, ever noticed? You we don't have to see... drive out in the country. Yeah. Is that it? Yeah. Because when I was a kid, I lived next to a big, beautiful field, mm -hmm. and I, we were the last house on the street, and it was field for basically like a mile. It was just nothing but field. And there used to be lightning bugs mm -hmm. all the time. And, of course, as they've done throughout the rest of Warehouseburg, they're on the west side where yeah. you need a high-density housing development or a or a warehouse. I mean, Brownsburg's probably the place for you. By the way, did you see, Casey? I posted this up on Twitter. Uh, they can't get the splash pad open this year. It's Why not? Uh, under under It's not working. They they well, they want you to believe they can operate a twenty five million dollar aquatic center, aquatic but they center, can't even but, get the. They've announced not a splash, splash pad. pad. I mean, my gosh, that that town is run by some of the dumbest, most incompetent people alive. But anyway, when they paved my little paradise mm -hmm. and they built this all these Put up houses, a parking lot. the the uh, lightning bugs went away. So I, is that just a like? You know, I saw some last year when I drove out to Washington D.C. to visit my brother. I recall driving by a field, uh -huh. and there were lightning bugs everywhere. I miss it lightning was bugs. dusk. It was. It just must have been the right place and the right time. But I don't see them in. I used downtown to love living. catching lightning bugs. Yeah. as a kid, you'll have to find a field and get out there at dusk. Would someone be willing to donate their field to me for an evening so I can have some sort of field of dreams <laughs> thing and go back and catch lightning Relive bugs? Relive your and, youth. Didn't you used to put them in a jar when you were a kid? You catch them. Oh and yeah, put them in absolutely. A, put them in a jar yeah and then if you smashed one your your finger was all lit up can you color. imagine though casey and we'll go to a break can you imagine being that incompetent you can't even get a splash pad open <laughs> i mean all it does is dump water mm -hmm. how, how could you be that and maybe they're having plumbing problems <laughs> it's going around <laughs> <laughs> well my opinion of the people who run that town is about the same what flowed out of that bathroom the other day <laughs> so that go. works well voicemails are coming up next on 93 wibc retirement when you picture your retirement, what do you see? Travel, relaxation, hobbies, more time with the people you love? Or are you met with uncertainty and concern? Whatever emotion the word retirement conjures up for you, Howard Bailey Financial is ready to help. Our financial advisors are not just experts in retirement strategies, they are your partners in crafting a personalized retirement plan that aligns with your dreams and aspirations. At Howard Bailey, we prioritize one thing above all else, your peace of mind. Don't leave your retirement planning to chance. Instead, call 866-482-9559 now to schedule your personal financial review and see how Howard Bailey can help give you confidence in your retirement goals. Again, call 866-482-9559. This endorsement was not provided by a client of Howard Bailey. This individual was compensated for this endorsement. For more information, visit howardbailey.com slash TS1. I occasionally have nerve discomfort in my hands, so the things I love to do... Let's play something, Grandma! ...became difficult as I got older. If you have occasional stabbing and burning in your hands and feet, try Nervive Nerve Relief. Nervive's clinically studied dose of alpha-lipoic acid reduces occasional nerve discomfort in as little as seven days with continued daily use. Say yes to healthy nerves with Nervive Nerve Relief. These statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. This product is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. 93 WIBC Mobile News. On the level. On the go. His charges stand. The sun's shining right now, which bodes a little poorly for the severe weather chances later. It is 62 downtown. I'm Kirk Darling. Here's what's trending at not at 1030. Hunter Biden's attempt to have criminal tax charges dismissed is being rejected by a federal judge. Judge Mark Scarcy, having said he'd need a couple of weeks, instead ruled against every one of Hunter Biden's eight motions within just a few days of hearing them. Biden's lead attorney, Abby Lowell, argued in 
court here in L.A. last Wednesday that the tax charges should never have been brought. In essence, the judge ruled that there is indeed a case to answer over allegations that Hunter Biden evaded more than one and a half million dollars in taxes. Fox's Jonathan Hunt. American Airlines is taking steps to make it easier to fly with pets. Passengers can now bring their furry companion on board along with a full-size carry-on bag instead of just one small item. The bag must be able to fit under the seat, though, or your pet will have to go into the cargo hold. I'm Kirk Darling on the level, on the go, and on WYBC.com. Having health insurance is important. So if you or anyone in your family has Medicaid or CHIP, listen up. Check your mail for a renewal form from your state. Complete the form and mail it back right away so you don't lose your coverage. If you do lose Medicaid or CHIP, visit healthcare.gov to see if you're eligible to enroll in a low-cost, quality health plan. Keep your family covered. Paid for by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. Mortgage rates have lowered going into the spring selling season. Now is the time to act to maximize your equity. Mark Deedle has the plan and experience to sell your home fast and for maximum value this spring. Maybe you want maximum equity from your home, but not sure how. Mark Deedle guarantees your home sold at a mutually agreed upon price and deadline or he will buy it. Listen to what Crystal in Franklin had to say about working with Mark Deedle. I was moving to Kentucky and needed to move fast. I got the Mark Deedle marketing plan and was blown away. The plan worked. I got a full list price offer in the first weekend. Just like that, Mark and his team got it done. Call the agent I trust and recommend and the agent who guarantees your home sold or he'll buy it. Call Mark Deedle at 317-755-4232 for all the details or go online to markdeedle.com. That's Mark, D-I-E-T-E-L.com. Wealth changing question. Has your advisor created a portfolio based only on your age and risk tolerance? That's simply not good enough. Your money deserves better and so do you. At Creative Planning, our private wealth managers learn about you first, and then they create a customized plan and portfolio by partnering with our in-house money managers, accountants, and attorneys. Don't settle for a standard portfolio. Book your free meeting today at creativeplanning.com. Creative Planning, a richer way to wealth. Indy's leader in patio installation is now offering a new driveway package. Schedule a free estimate today at IndieDecorativeConcrete.com. That's IndieDecorativeConcrete.com. What if the next time you painted your home was the last time you painted your home? Our Rhino Shield has been on for eight years. Rhino Shield. Call 888-RHINO-41. Don't paint, don't vinyl. Go Rhino! You're listening to The Kendall and Casey Show on 93 WIPC. It's time to hear from you. Kendall and Casey present Voicemails. Brought to you by QC Kinetics for non-surgical regenerative medicine treatments at 317-559-PAIN. If you'd like to contribute, the number 317-684-8444. Questions, comments, smart remarks, whatever your hot take is, we encourage you to call. It is 1034 with Kendall and Casey on 93 WIBC. And our first call, well, it's about Purdue once again. This guy has a point, but he also wants to talk a little politics as well. Here we go. This take is the most ridiculous take I've ever heard. Just because Purdue's from the state of Indiana, that all... Basketball fans in Indiana should should uh, <laughs> cheer for them this weekend. How many Duke fans do you think cheers for North Carolina Thanks. when they make the Final Four? How many North Carolina fans cheer for Duke? How many Duke fans do you think are going to be cheering for North Carolina State this weekend? It ain't going to happen, all right? Louisville fans don't cheer for Kentucky just because they made the Final Four, all right? There's a rivalry for a reason. Yeah, I'm an IU fan. IU sucks. But Purdue will always suck. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> I, uh, okay. So can I say this? Yeah, the, uh, the, the, this thing with Purdue is just my favorite because the Purdue fans mm-hmm. have been some of the just meanest, mean-spirited people over the years. <laughs> and I, you never hear me coming out here complaining about, oh, my gosh, Purdue's so mean to IU. Mm-hmm. No, that's the point of the rivalry. I had... I don't know. This went on for hours yesterday, a con- a text conversation with a once very high-profile radio person in the city of Indianapolis. And this person was just beside themselves. And I finally said, 
look. Okay, I had no idea you were this big a snowflake. Now, he went to Purdue. His kids go to Purdue. I said, I had no idea you were this big a snowflake, but here's the deal. We are the IU radio station. Mm -hmm. IU is, and this is going to anger all the Purdue people, but Mm -hmm. IU is infinitely more popular in the state of Indiana. Like, if you take the entire state of Indiana Mm -hmm. and you look at who is a fan for each school, IU has a far broader reach it's indiana university Mm -hmm. like it's not even it's not even close the fine the people who care about purdue are the people who went to purdue or like you have kids who went to purdue yeah that's it it is not notre dame football it is not iu basketball there is an infinitely bigger reach in the state for those things with people who are just universally the those fans who have no connection to the school whatsoever my parents are great examples of that they went to indiana state they're huge iu fans there's no people who didn't go to purdue or huge purdue basketball fans like and i'm convinced and i told this guy unlike this guy i'm convinced the overwhelming majority of our purdue listeners Mm -hmm. get it (laughs) and they're having some fun with this and they're not losing their minds over an iu grad saying i hope purdue loses because they saying the same thing about IU and mm-hmm. they know it. Yeah, I mean, when you think about the state of Indiana and you think of basketball, IU comes to mind. Just like when you think about football, I think you automatically go to Notre exactly. Dame. Exactly. It's fun, though, that Purdue is in the Final Four. It's and- fine, but this laughable, well, I always cheer for all the in-states. Oh, bull. Absolute bull. I don't believe for one damn second that in 1993 that there was a chorus of Purdue people <laughs> (laughs) cheering for IU to beat Kansas in the Elite Eight and that there was some just, just, you know, funeral procession in 1992 when Alan Henderson tore up his leg to prevent IU from winning the national national championship in West Lafayette. I don't believe it for a second, Casey. Okay, so the Final Four happens on Saturday in Arizona. Now, Kevin, I want to go out of order. Can we play the next one, Purdue 2? Because we did get another phone call about this, but they want to bring attention to another basketball game that's happening. Hi, Kendall and Casey. Hey, uh, all of your comments about Purdue are well-intentioned. The Boilers are very good, but there's another team in Indiana that will be playing Tuesday night Mm -hmm. in the semifinals, the NIT. The Sycamores of Indiana State will be playing the Utah Utes. The Sycamores will be going after win number 32 on the season. Yes, they have lost six games, but one of those games was at Michigan State, and another was at someplace else you may have heard of this year, (laughs) Alabama, early in the season, without one of the the Sycamores' best players. I'm not saying the Sycamores are as good or better or worse than Purdue. I'm saying they are a bunch of guys that play their hearts out, They're pretty darn good, and they deserve the support of the people of Indianapolis and Indiana. Okay, so the tip-off time is at 7 o'clock tonight. ESPN is going to televise this game. So he's saying, as I said yesterday, we should all, as Hoosiers from the great state of Indiana, be proud of Purdue and support this Indiana Uh team. Now he's saying the same thing about the Sycamores. Yeah, and this guy actually has a valid point because, number one, (laughs) unlike Purdue, whose team has the personality of dried paint, Mm. the ISU guy, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Larry (laughs) Nerd, has some personality. He's going to be a fun guy to hang out with. And here's why everybody should cheer for Indiana State. And I can say this as someone who's, uh, my dad grew up in Terre Haute. My parents went to Indiana State when Larry Bird was there. Mm -hmm. My grandparents were Terre Haute lifers. There's nothing to look forward to in Terre Haute. (laughs) Well, there's a casino opening very soon. There's a casino (laughs) opening very soon. They have some decent public golf courses. Mm -hmm. That's about it. These kids are all those people in Terre Haute actually Mm -hmm. have to look forward to. And I can also say this because I went to Indiana State for a year, and I got the hell out of that place as soon as humanly possible. Have you ever walked somewhere and two seconds after being there go, I've made an egregious mistake, and then realize you're stuck there for the next (laughs) nine months? Yeah, that was me, Casey. So, Mm -hmm. yes, I agree with this guy. Everybody should cheer for Indiana State. Mm -hmm. That is a team that everybody should get behind. Why? Because those people in Terre Haute have absolutely nothing else to live for. 
They need something to look forward to. All right, well, Hinkle Fieldhouse is going to be a sea of blue tonight. Now, yesterday we were talking about this fan base list that came up with the top seven child actors in film history. Yeah. And here is a phone call about that. Hey, Rob and Casey. I listened to your show today in regards to the greatest child actors, actresses, whatever. And I do agree, Christian uh, Bale probably shouldn't be on that. I don't recall very many movies that he was in as a child. But um, in regards to Jodie Foster, it was John Hinckley Jr. that shot Reagan and not Kennedy to impress Jodie Foster. So um, you said Kennedy, and it's actually Reagan. Just thought I'd correct you on that one. And Uh also in regards to our government officials, people don't do anything because they think they become so complacent and they're afraid of them. Um, They've learned to be told to respect authority and they see them as authority figures instead of their employees. I just feel that that's part of the reason people allow them to get away with what they get away with. Anyways, have a good day. You've got something to say about him correcting us? I just can't. Mm -hmm. Like, everybody knows Lee Harvey Oswald shot Kennedy. Like, does this guy think I'm walking through the day? Mm -hmm. Uh, Here's what we ought to do, Casey. But the Jodie Foster thing was the Reagan thing. Right. Okay. But we said the guy's name, like, correctly. Yeah. Clearly, it wasn't like we said, you know, Lee Harvey Oswald shot, like... Here's what we ought to do, Casey. This What's amazes up? me. And I've said this for years and years and years. 99% of the jobs, you make a mistake at your job, there's no one, no matter how incidental it is. Like, if you stock the Oreos wrong at the Walmart, mm-hmm. other than your immediate supervisor who might catch that an hour later, no one's ever going to say a word. But this, you know, you know, <laughs> it was, <laughs> it was a Kennedy, it was Reagan. You know what we ought to do? Because think about this. We do this for 15 hours. Mm-hmm. 15 hours a week, Casey, where every single word we say is scrutinized by tens of thousands of people. Mm-hmm. Oh, by the way, I love Gary in the YouTube chat. Oswald didn't shoot anyone. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's that hot take. Call we the ought- line and say that. We 317-684-8444. Ought- <laughs> we ought to, uh, we ought to, uh, we'd have to clear this with our bosses. We ought to, uh, one of these weeks when we're going to be out, just let just listeners come in. Uh-huh. And we just sit and we just keep a tab of how many mistakes <laughs> for 15 hours they make. Uh-huh. And then at the end of the week, yeah. we'll just, we'll uh, read the up. laundry list. <laughs> you said this incorrectly. You had this fact wrong. Well, and it also kind of goes back to the argument that we have about like the TikTok or you know the hot takes that are easy to have for 30 seconds sure but sustain that for 15 hours a week yeah for the you know for the record mm-hmm. yes i i know Hinkley shot reagan yeah. not kennedy but again i really 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 appreciate you calling and and setting the record straight on that because there might have been a bunch of people you know and this is really why this guy might have been doing a community service yeah there might be a bunch of people at history tests today in public school right who got and, that wrong because of you they might have gone with right. you right. know hinkley shot kennedy and he's it would be all my fault he's some just kid following not, along it's stuck in his craw he had to let you know some kid might not graduate because of me casey and now i have to walk around <laughs> mm-hmm. with that on my conscience that guilt. all day today Another Another phone call about the child actors list. I can't believe Drew Barrymore uh, was not on the uh, list yesterday, especially over Christian Bale. Mm-hmm. Remember the movie Cat's Eye and uh, Firestarter? Mm-hmm. I thought she would be on there before him, but thanks. Yeah. yeah. That's also, crazy because I had said the E.T. kid would not be right. on there, but she was in E.T. Right, she was. She was the little girl in E.T. So you meant, I thought you were talking about the little boy. I was, that's yeah. what I'm saying. But, but she yeah. was in E.T. She, nope. Drew Barrymore, uh, they may not have, on the list. They may have banned insufferable sea hags from the list, and maybe that's why she didn't make it. I don't know. <laughs> do we have time for another phone call? We've got a couple about Del Fire. Should we table those? Because Hammer's going to. Why don't we do it. them next hour? Okay. Because I, yeah, I do want to. Because I want to. We'll see that. Why don't we do that at eleven fifteen? We'll do the Delphi phone calls. Yeah, because you were in this uh, conundrum yes. yesterday, yeah. so I think you need to hear these. And phone we'll calls. ask Hammer about that conundrum too. All right, Hammer's going to join us next. It's ninety three WIBC. Monday on the Tony Kinnecast. Lizzo calls it quits after the whole strong, proud, follow your heart and ignore the haters progressive thing doesn't work out. Tune in at 7 p.m. right here or the podcast anytime. Greetings, listener friends. It is Rob for the Bath Authority. You know, the Bath Authority does it all. Walk in tubs, replacement showers, tub to shower conversions, and much more. And they do it providing the highest quality bathroom remodeling products along with a world-class customer experience. What it means to you is it'll be low maintenance, 
resistant to mold and mildew, easy to clean, and last for decades. All sounds great, right? And listen to this. Right now, if you call 317-532-5711, 317-532-5711, schedule your free in-home estimate today, and you're going to get $1,000 off a new shower bath. That's right. If you call 317-532-5711, schedule your free in-home estimate today, you'll get $1,000 off a new shower bath, plus 36 months of interest free financing the bathauthority.com that's where you can see it all for yourself the bathauthority.com 317-532-5711 tell them rob sent you do you get sinus infections congestion sinus pressure and pain above your eyes below your eyes sinus headaches you've gone to the doctor you've visited urgent care over and over again and it's always the same thing oh uh i know Let's try antibiotics and nasal sprays. But the sinus infections keep coming back. The good news? Relief is possible. How? A minimally invasive procedure done in the office of Indianapolis Sinus Center called balloon sinuplasty. Imagine the relief of not having to deal with your sinus infections anymore. Set an appointment today with Indianapolis Sinus Center and find out if balloon sinuplasty is the solution for you. Call 317-528-9650. 317-528-9650. That's 317-528-9650. Hey guys, it's Rob from my friends at Life Church. You know, over the years, many, many WIBC listeners have found a home at Life Church. And this Sunday, which will be here before you know it, by the way, Life Church would love the opportunity to meet and welcome you and your family. You know, there's so many powerful things going on at Life Church, and they would love the opportunity for you and your family to see it in person. Life Church makes it super simple for you. Campuses all across central Indiana, Noblesville, Fishers, Eagle Creek, and Pendleton, plus a Amazing online services. Learn more about it all at LifeChurchIN.com. Tony Katz here for Premier Arms in Brownsburg. This is your Premier Gun Store. Premier Arms has the experience and know-how to help the new gun buyer and the most experienced marksman. They've been in business for over 20 years and have a friendly, knowledgeable staff that wants to help you, not talk down to you. Premier Arms in Brownsburg is family-friendly, so bring the kids. All ages are welcome. Everyone can find what they're looking for at Premier Arms in Brownsburg, 3754 South Green Street, online at premierarms.com. Tell them Tony Katz sent you, premierarms.com. That moment when you realize you have a serious air conditioner issue, a real strip down to your skivvies, no one sleeping tonight, head in the freezer, fail party. But fear not, there's an expert for that. Let your local experts at Broad Ripple Service Experts keep you cool. Get worry-free comfort for one low monthly payment. Want to chill? There's an expert for that. Call Broad Ripple Service Experts at 866-EXPERTS. See website for license details. The regular season is winding down, but the energy inside Game Bridge Fieldhouse is ramped up. Halliburton tries another three. Bang! Tyrese Halliburton from downtown. Laser fans, we need you to bring your intensity and passion down the home stretch and make your impact jump every game. Step back three. Tyrese got it. <laughs> Your Pacers meet the best from the West in a Friday night matchup with the Thunder. Get your tickets at Pacers.com. Pacers Thunder, Friday at 7. I'm a waitress, so I know the difference between regular shoes and Skechers slip-resistant work shoes. Skechers slip-resistant work shoes make my job go like this. Here's your Pasta Primavera. Thanks. While regular shoes make my job go like this. Here's your Pasta Primavera. Whoa! whoa. And that difference is why I wear Skechers slip-resistant work shoes to keep me safe on my feet. Plus, they're easy to clean and have Skechers exclusive air-cooled memory foam for comfort throughout my shift. Get America's number one selling work shoe at Skechers.com, a Skechers store near you, or wherever work shoes are sold. So we got a couple voicemails about the Delphi case, and we're going to share those at 1120 but you wanted to ask hammer his take on this so obviously there's been this defense fund GoFundMe, whatever it's called set up for richard allen who's the guy accused of being the delphi murderer and casey and i had a long conversation about this yesterday and put all the shenanigans and the shtick or whatever aside like i was having a real serious conversation with her i'm torn on this because there's a big part of me that wants to give this guy 
money because I think he's getting totally screwed by the legal system. And I feel like the, the, the people in positions of authority are going out of their way to make it so that this guy does not get a fair shake. And uh, it, there's just wild accusations about what's going on out there. Some of them seem to have some merit. And you know, obviously they want these witnesses to be called. The judge has denied their ability to have them funded as part of his taxpayer-funded trial. And so I thought, well, there's part of me that says, okay, I, I want this guy to have a fair shake, so I want to give him the money. But then there's also part of me that's like, well, what if he actually did do it? What if there is some smoking gun that the prosecution hasn't revealed? And then I'm going to feel like a piece of garbage because I gave money to help a murderer. So what should I do? That's the question. Will you feel bad if the court plays out and, yeah, it was pretty obvious this guy did it? Could you sleep with yourself? Because if you can, then give the money. Because right now, there's a lot of things that are unknown. Now, I will push back just a little bit. Let's not act like Richard Allen's defense team is Matlock, Perry Mason, and uh, the best that the game has to you offer You don't think here. they've done a good job creating reasonable doubt so far? I think they knew exactly what happened when those crime scene pictures were leaked. And if you do that, you are a scumbag. If you intentionally, I didn't know that the mm -hmm. office was unlocked. I can't believe those crime scene pictures went out to the media. That is such a scumbag move to put dead little girls' pictures in the hands of the media. That's so disgusting. I think they absolutely knew what happened. That's just my opinion. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Do, do but, you think there's any validity to, like, they, they put out these theories, obviously, and they've put them in, you know, court filings, so it's not like they're on, you know, Dateline NBC doing it. They're putting them in actual legal filings. I mean, I read these things. I'm not as into it as you have been or, like, Donnie Burgess has been, but I read these things, and I'm like, if even a fraction of this stuff mm -hmm. is true, we got a major problem on our hands here. We got a ball game, and we were talking off the air a little bit. I could see this going either way. When we sit back and we... Let this trial play out because I believe it's going to be televised. I hope they got the microphone fixed up so we can actually understand what's going on. Two things could happen here. They could have all the information out there and we could say, this is not the guy. Right. Or it could be so overwhelming. Mm -hmm. And as soon as the guilty verdict comes down, we're all going to look at each other. Yeah, what the hell were we thinking? That right. was clear. I mean, I could see both things coming true right now. And this is my struggle because I think he's getting a raw deal. It just seems like everything has gone against him, and I think it should be the opposite. I think everything should be going for him because if he's convicted, you want to say, hey, you had everything in your no favor. No doubt in your mind. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, I will say this. As much as I think that those attorneys knew exactly what happened by leaking the grisly crime scene pictures, I also think that the judge has tried to make herself a star in this thing. I agree with that. And I hate that because that's the last thing you want. Like, for me, it all comes down to the parents of Abby and Libby. Mm -hmm. Right. These people have been through hell. Hell that none of us, most of us, will never know. And the last thing I want is some cartoon show out there mm -hmm. or some Mickey Mouse operation that isn't a 100% clean trial. They deserve a clean trial. How could the guy live? This is what I just can't get past. And maybe there's, again, there's some logical answer to this. How could the guy live in that community for all those years? He is a somewhat prominent person. Now, he's not like the mayor prominent, but people knew who he was. He had a, you know, a, again, not a well-known job in the sense of, oh, what a celebrity, but he was amongst the, the populace. He wasn't Ted Kaczynski living in the woods somewhere. How could this guy be right there that entire time, and it took all of those years for them to go, oh, yeah, that's the guy, and they're like, oh, it's so obvious that that's the guy. Yeah, there's a lot of questions, and I remember when we had the um – uh, Superintendent Doug Carter in the studio. And, you know, we've disagreed on this. Now, I like Doug as a person, but we have disagreed on the way that this whole thing has played out because it felt like people were dragging their feet. Families were getting false hope a lot of times. Mm -hmm. Press conferences were happening just for the sake of having them. And then we heard a lot of BS of, well, maybe we know more than we're telling you. Well, then go find the bad guy right. then. So a lot of things bothered me about the investigation. And you're right. It's If you give money to him, I don't think it makes you a horrible person, but can you live with yourself if the trial if shows it's overwhelmingly this guy? It's mm -hmm. this either-or thing because I think he's not getting a fair trial. I want him to get a fair trial. I want to know the truth. I want to know what happened. If he did it, I want him to fry for it. But I feel like the only way for him to get a fair trial is for like these witnesses to be able to be 
afforded and called. But then I'm also worried about, like, I want to make sure all the money goes to the actual defense fund. I want right. to make sure there's no shenanigans that go on. So I just am. You're going to donate to this defense fund, and you're going to find out your money's in some stripper's <laughs> G-string point. up at uh, <laughs> the Hip Hugger in Kokomo. Well, and also, do you have to believe that these star witnesses are going to provide something valuable? This is the point. And are they? You don't know. Totally stuck. But they should at least have the opportunity, I think, to go up there and speak. If it's a nothing burger, it's a nothing burger. We'll decide that. But don't tell us that you're, you know, keeping these witnesses off to the side. I want everything out there. Yeah, I agree. Full Uh, transparency. You pulled a Rob Kendall last night. I did. So your betting strategy when it comes to (laughs) your beloved Chicago Bears is that you always bet on the other team. Yeah. Money line. Doing the same thing with Purdue right now. Betting on Purdue money line. Same thing. (laughs) Because no matter what happens... You're going to be a winner at yeah, the end of the exactly, night. Exactly, absolutely. Either you're going to make some money mm-hmm. or your team the, wins, your team wins yep. and your other team loses. Yep. So last night I put uh, a little bit of money on LSU money line mm-hmm. because I wanted to see Caitlin do her thing. Mm-hmm. I wanted to see her win. She put on a show. She's a one-woman man, too. Wow. Boy. She's gr- a great basketball player. Obviously the best woman basketball player ever. She's obnoxious, though, right? We can agree. She's obnoxious. I think she's got a little You moxie. realize who she was on the court with, I'm not right? saying right? it's not, an, I'm not like, comparing her to... I'm, you look at that LSU team and you look at the head coach <laughs> over there. Yeah. Like, if you're seating a bracket of the top ten most obnoxious people <laughs> on the floor that night she might come in at number 11 so i'm not gonna say that but uh again now angel reese the star player of lsu who last year Mm -hmm. hey she talked to talk and she walked the walk she got to run her mouth because she won the national championship but now that she got she's saying it's the it was the worst year of her life she's the victim now because everybody was talking trash to her and being unfair Mm. she said she was uh, sexualized this year. Wasn't she on this cover of Sports Illustrated, a swimsuit issue? Yeah, she yeah. was in the swimsuit issue. She was in it, yes, thank you. No one put a gun to her head to make her appear in the swimsuit issue. What did she think the swimsuit issue was all about? And I saw the photos, and my God, she's an attractive woman. She's wearing the bejesus out of that swimsuit. <laughs> God bless her for it. But don't say, I can't believe you're sexualizing me. Mm-hmm. Now here's me wearing you know, a Dorito with dental floss. Mm-hmm. It doesn't work that way. And everybody up in arms over LSU leaving the court before the national anthem. Nothing the, burger, though. Yeah, the coach said that they. she tells them 12 minutes before, let's go back in the locker room and talk. You know, she started doing that when a lot of people were doing the kneeling mm-hmm. thing. Mm-hmm. She's like, listen, we're just going to avoid the whole thing. We're going to yep. go back to the locker room. Yeah, so... Again, this is what happens sometimes when political people try to cover sports and they don't know what the hell they're talking about. Because yeah. I see people like <laughs> Benny Johnson on Twitter and yeah. all these other people. Like, just do a little bit of research. And you know, they've always left they've the been court. Doing that Did you bring years, us something yeah. real quick? So, Chocola is back. Oh! Uh, listener Dave brought us some Chocola. How exciting. I don't know if he's behind the launch or what it is, but I'm going to pass them out for the yeah! crowd here. Yes, sir. What's coming up this afternoon? Uh, biggest stories of the day could have some major weather. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Keeping our eye weather. on some tornado watches could be happening in Indy. I got you covered. You're on, Hammer. Thank you. It's Kendall and Casey on 93 WIBC. Attention seniors, you're invited to the grand opening of Centerwell Pendleton Pike. Centerwell offers primary care centered on seniors. So come celebrate on Wednesday, April 10th at 8101 Pendleton Pike, Suite E in Indianapolis from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Enjoy food, music, and more at this free community event. Plus, tour the new doctor's office and meet the care team. For details, call 317-648-5581 or visit meetcenterwellindiana.com. When you get nachos, tacos, empanadas, spicy queso with jalapenos, Pepto-Bismol's there. Pepto-Bismol provides fast, effective relief from nausea, heartburn, indigestion, upset stomach, and diarrhea. All the things that can happen unexpectedly on vacation. So before you travel, pack the Pepto. Pepto-Bismol. When you have nausea, heartburn, indigestion, upset stomach, diarrhea. Use as directed. Keep out of reach of children. This week at Sullivan Hardware and Garden, see their large selection of grills, Weber, Traeger, and Napoleon, along with the Big Green Egg. 
Coming up in two minutes, what to expect with some severe weather and what it's already done a little bit this morning. Plus, the polling numbers on the Republican side when it comes to the governor's race and the awe of playing at Hinkle for Indiana State head coach Josh Schertz. I'm Kurt Darling. That and more coming up from the Technology Recycler Studios after Fox News Radio at the top of the hour. You're listening to 93 WIBC, WIBC HD1 Indianapolis. It's 11 o'clock. Tragic and unintentional. I'm Chris Foster, Fox News. That's how Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is describing an airstrike in Gaza that killed seven workers with the food aid charity World Central Kitchen. Secretary of State Antony Blinken. These people are heroes. They run into the fire, not away from it. They show the best of what humanity has to offer. The charity's operations in Gaza are suspended and ships with aid still unloaded are turned back to Cyprus. House Speaker Mike Johnson makes a new pitch for Ukraine aid for its war against Russia. Speaker Johnson expects Congress to move on a funding package that would include aid to Ukraine when lawmakers return from recess next week. Johnson has floated paying for the aid with a loan to the Ukrainians, attaching a provision that would roll back President Biden's freeze on liquefied natural gas exports or using frozen Russian assets. If we could use the seized assets of Russian oligarchs, to allow the Ukrainians to fight them, that's just pure poetry. Some Democrats and Republicans would like to see Johnson vote on a $95 billion foreign aid bill already passed by the Senate. On Capitol Hill, Ryan Schmelz, Fox News. The companies that own the cargo ship that took down the key bridge in Baltimore are looking to limit their legal liability. The companies filed under an 1851 maritime law that allows them to seek to limit their liability to the value of the ship's remains. They want to cap their liability at roughly $43 million. Credit rating agency Morningstar DBRS estimates the total insured losses for the Baltimore disaster could be 2 to $4 billion. Four of the eight People who were working on the bridge when it collapsed remain missing and are presumed dead. Fox's Tanya J. Power. It's a down day on Wall Street. The Dow, S&P, and NASDAQ are all down about 1, 1.5%. One America's listening to Fox News. Ninety-three WIBC Mobile News. On the level. On the go. It's not over yet. Radar is clear for now. It's sunny and 61 downtown. I'm Kurt Darling for Moss Roofing. Here's what's trending at 1102. A tornado is already said to have hit near Evansville this morning. It was part of a few systems of severe weather moving through the Midwest, and more are expected today. Okay, straight line winds, that could be just as uh, hazardous as a, a weak tornado. So also seek shelter inside, downstairs, or in an innermost room. You never know how strong those winds could get. Matt Eckhoff with the National Weather Service. A flooding has also been an issue in some places today. The numbers show that Senator Mike Braun has the lead in the overall race for governor when it comes to the Republican primary. That's what the paint a picture is painted by a poll for by Indy Politics and Crossroads Public Affairs, who surveyed 500 likely Republican voters, and 33% of them said that they would pick Braun, but 30% also said they were undecided. An arrest made in a shooting on the southwest side overnight. Police say a man was killed on the front porch of a home in the Belmont neighborhood. He, he says something needs to be done before it gets worse. Harrison Silcox reports on the recent violent crime. Last Saturday night near the Circle Center Mall, four boys and three girls were hurt in a shooting. Well, certainly you have to be concerned about, you know, what's happening in the city and particularly uh, when it comes to uh, juveniles. Reverend Charles Harrison with the Indy 10 Point Coalition talking to WIBC's Hammer and Nigel. He says a lot needs to change before someone gets killed, saying changing curfew laws may be a start. Harrison Silcox, 93, WIBC Mobile News. Gas prices holding steady at 340 a gallon on average in Indiana today, says Gas Buddy. ISU head coach Josh Schertz eager to coach his Sycamores inside of Hinkle Fieldhouse tonight in the NIT Final Four. In Hinkle Fieldhouse, one of the you know iconic venues in, in all of sports, not just college basketball, but uh, this is a you know, one of the true cathedrals, uh, you know, in our in our game. They face Utah at 7 o'clock. I'm Kirk Darling on the level, on the go, and on WIBC.com. 
get ready for storm season because you know as well as I do, storms in Indiana can be fierce and they can come out of nowhere. So don't wait for a leak to have your roof inspected. Have peace of mind about your roof being able to handle any storm. Moss Roofing, M-O-S-S, mossroofing.com provides free inspections and can spot potential issues before they turn into costly repairs. Whether you're looking for a siding replacement after a strong wind or a roof replacement after a hailstorm, Moss Roofing has options that fit any budget. Just ask Moss Roofing about their payment plans. No matter your situation, Moss Roofing has you covered with a job done right every shingle time. I love that. That's very funny. Contact Moss Roofing today. 317-747-3665. 317-747-3665. Tell them Tony Katz sent you. Moss Roofing, 747-3665 or online at Moss. M-O-S-S. Moss Roofing. Com. You're listening to Rob Kendall. When we talk about sending money somewhere, mm -hmm. we're talking about printing the money because we have no money. And Casey Daniels. My government would never lie to me, would they? On 93 WIPC. Good morning. It is Tuesday, April 2nd. It is five minutes after 11. It's Kendall and Casey on 93 WIBC. This segment, a couple polls and some information. And we're going to start... In the great state of Indiana, a recent poll commissioned by Indy Politics says that U.S. Senator Mike Braun has a three to one lead on his next closest competitors in the primary for governor. Okay, so Abdul does a poll pretty much every election cycle. It, when it's local stuff, he'll do the city of Indianapolis. When it's a statewide elections like governor, he'll he'll do that. And he has the polling results out for the Republican governor's primary and they look they pretty much match up basically where other people have been with a trend and what i mean by that is as you mentioned what was braun at braun was at 33 is mm -hmm. that right yep 33 yeah, okay. percent said so, they'd vote for braun so braun, so braun is at 33 uh, what, Crouch was second at like 10-something? Well, this is where it gets a little sticky. You've got Crouch at 11%, Eric Doan at 11%, right. okay. and also Brad Chambers at 10%. Okay. So they're all kind of right there together. Perfect. I, okay, I totally agree with all of that. And then Curtis Hill, despite uh, skipping the diversity debate, at five percent, he's made it to five. Congratulations, mm -hmm. Curtis. It'll be the best 5% anybody ever got ever. I hope you're proud of yourself. Um but I think that's about right. I think it's Braun. If you the, the if the election were today, Braun is probably got that sizable lead on everybody. And then you've got the three next are the three people with the money. Mm -hmm. You got Crouch, you got Chambers, and you got Doden that are kind of in the same same establishment stew, yep. fighting for the same votes. So would you like to start with the trend, or would you like to start? We'll start with the trend. Sure. I just took that upon myself. Yep. The problem for Braun with this is not only has he peaked, he's gone backwards. Mm -hmm. Like, if you look at where his internals supposedly were. Right. He's lost kind of, a few. Right. He was at 40 or even higher in some of these things. So he's gone backwards. We, we've consistently seen him between, like, 30 and 35% in these most recent polls that have come out, which tells you that's probably where he is. He's probably got about a third of the vote, which means he has gone backwards. They have made a dent. In and these are pre debates and et cetera. Mm -hmm. They have made a dent, the ads have made a dent in Braun's lead. That's the negative for Braun. The positive for Braun is he ain't got to get 50%. He's just got to get more than everybody else. And of these, whatever it is, 30 plus percent or how many are left undecided, they aren't all going to go to one person. They're right. They're going to be split up. And the problem with Crouch and Doden and Chambers is they're all fighting in the same stew. Mm -hmm. They're all fighting for this same crop of voters because they haven't. They're all in their own way kind of weirdly hitched to Holcomb. Obviously, Silent Suzanne, because she did absolutely nothing as Holcomb pulled his crap for the past seven years. Mm -hmm. Chambers is flat out running on the Holcomb agenda. Mm -hmm. And then everybody, nobody believes Doden's a conservative. Nobody looks at him and believes he's some sort of fighter or outsider or anything else. He's stood for absolutely nothing this campaign. He has a lot of money, so he's a lot of name ID. But they're all fighting for that same group. So depends on who's left. If it's all conservatives that are undecided because they don't like any of these people, they're not getting them. They're probably not going to Curtis because Curtis barely has a pulse in this race. So Braun's going to get a percentage of those. If they are all establishment people that haven't decided, they're going to be divided amongst the three, mm -hmm. and Braun's still going to win. Right. So there's almost no way that unless they actually start getting more people to deflect defect from Braun's campaign, 
that he's going to lose. Now, does he win with 27? Does he win with 40? Does he win with, you know, what? I don't I don't know. But there's almost no way unless they actually start getting serious about running ads against Mike Braun and Doden's stupid qualified immunity ads are not going to get it done. You have to actually talk about his actual voting record, about raising taxes, about growing government, about reminding people of Mike Braun's actual voting record. Mm-hmm. It ain't going to matter. Well, it's a good thing for Braun, and it creates a challenge for the rest of them because not only do they need to grow their own base, but they need to lower his at the same time, and that's a big lift. And again, the real embarrassment in this is Curtis Hill. I mean, if you're Curtis Hill, you're, what, was he at five? Did he get to five? Is yeah, he, he did, five percent. Okay, finally made five. You're the sitting attorney, for, or you're a former sitting attorney general. You were at one point in, in your political rise viewed as a future governor of the state of Indiana. You have, you have since lost a primary, a convention to Todd Rokita, who, while he has a law license, has no business being in anywhere when it comes to executing that law license because he has no, like, legal, there's nothing in his legal background you'd go, wow, that's a real Ben Matlock-esque performance up there. So you get beat at convention, then you run for Congress, and you lose there. Again, he got second, but he ran for Congress and lost. And now you're on your third bite mm-hmm. of the uh, of the election apple. And not only are you not winning, you're not anywhere close. You're not even close to second. You're not even close to third. You're not even close to fourth. Mm-hmm. You're getting doubled up by the person in fourth in fourth place. So if you're Curtis Hill, you have no, basically no money. You're not on television. What? What are you? What are you doing here? Your your it's your campaign has been a colossal failure mm-hmm. thus far. Yep. At this point, it's pretty much done for him. Well, yeah. How's he going to make up? Yeah. Okay. Let's say Braun goes back. I think it's realistic that if d- the rich kids, Doden and Chambers, actually use their money to go after Braun effectively on mm-hmm. his voting record, which is not this qualified immunity thing. It's the gas tax. It's the forty plus tax increases in twenty seventeen. It's voting to print the money during COVID and then saying, "Well, I did it because everybody else did it." Like those are the. Th- it's this campaign finance thing that's a huge issue. It shows, like we talked about, Nikki Kelly. Not only is it incompetence, it's then you're passing the buck onto other people. Those are things that would resonate w- with other people. But let's say you can move him back to twenty five. Even if you moved Braun back to twenty five, does anybody believe Curtis Hill is going to gain twenty points no. in the next? No, and at what weeks. point does he need to suspend his campaign? I think another interesting thing that came out of this poll was they were asked which candidate they think is going to focus the most on small businesses. And in that group, you've got Braun in the lead. And then Chambers sits at 14% and then Dode at 11 and then Crouch at 8 So if you're a small business owner, uh-huh. you're looking at chambers as the next in line after which Braun. is fascinating and it shows how uh, the an effect of the doden campaign has been because he's run a campaign around rural indiana small mm-hmm. business main mm-hmm. street and it's clearly it's not re- these campaigns have all been so poorly run the only one that i would say has been moderately well run and not that it's been all that well run but it's just everybody else is so bad is Braun. Braun is effectively not not run for governor yet he's going to win the governor's race his ads are nothing about there's can you tell me, Casey, mm-hmm. one concrete policy proposal that Mike Braun has on a large scale? Like one big issue that Mike Braun has a concrete policy position. Oh, gosh, I just saw one of his commercials last night. I can't even remember what it was about. It was just him walking down the street. Yeah, there's isn't. <laughs> they don't exist. Mike <laughs> Braun is lapping the field. I know he ran a lot of border ads. Exactly. He's trying. I mean, he's run, Josh Kelly and those guys who are running his campaign, mm-hmm. they're, they're experienced people. I worked for Josh Kelly one time for a U.S. Senate race, so I've been around him. They're not idiots. They didn't just fall off the turnip truck. They know what they're doing. Oh, I remember what it was about. It was an anti doden ad. That's what it was. Yeah, so there's nothing for him. Mike Braun is going to be the governor, and this isn't a total indictment of us as voters, that we're going to elect a guy, and he's probably going to win by 15 or 20 points, to be the governor. I mean, he, he's going to be the Republican nominee for governor, which means he's going to be the governor, and you have no idea what his policies are. Mm-hmm. He has not given you one— though, by the way, Tony's um, releasing all these interviews he's done with these candidates. Yeah. They're embarrassing. These interviews that these candidates are doing with Tony are embarrassing. The, he played part of the Doden clip on property taxes, and it was some nonsensical, meandering, jibber-jabberish that I have no idea what he even said. All of these candidates are this way. All of The only one who has a concrete policy proposal and no one actually believes she is remotely serious about it is Crouch's Axe the Tax. That's it. And nobody believes Susan Crouch is cutting $8 billion from the budget. Not one of these candidates is talking about actually eliminating government. 
the ones who are talking about the pay-fors with any sort of tax reform are talking about how we grow money to the Treasury. It's none of their policies are based around streamlining government, growing government, getting rid of government. None of them. Braun, Doden, Chambers, uh, Silent, none of them. None of them are talking about this. And so you're lo what we, the reality of what we are left with is whoever, which one of, whichever one of these four turkeys um, <laughs> slips to the November and wins, mm -hmm. They're not going to be able to be pinned down on anything because they haven't committed to anything. I think it's fascinating that the small business owners think that Braun is going to help. And then Chambers comes in second. Chambers, head of IEDC, who's, whose entire job is to bring big business into but central it, Indiana. But it comes back to the indictment of us as voters, Casey. Why? Because we are falling for these ads we are not doing our research mike braun does not care about you if you're a small business owner sorry there's nothing in his voting record that would tell you that you know why because he raised taxes 40 plus times in 2017 a bunch of those hit small business owners very hard because a lot of them were related to like licensure fees etc that you had to have that you have to it's a tax increase they'll call it a fee it's a tax because if you don't do it you can't operate in the profession it's the government with threat of force the gas tax hurts small businesses brad chambers crushing small business, taking money from small businesses, taking money from regular people, giving it to mega corporations. But if we are just willing to vote based on how many times we saw someone on television, mm -hmm. well, they're going to, of course, treat us like garbage because that's what we deserve because we're saying, please treat us like garbage. So another question that they were asked was about affordable housing and who will do the best job in supporting an increase in affordable housing. And again, 23% chose Mike Braun. He came out on top. Now, in second place in this question was Eric Doden at 10%. What does that even mean, though, help with affordable housing? What does that even mean, Casey? Who can do the best job at making housing more what the, affordable? What the, hell is, what the hell is affordable housing? What is that? Lower than what it is now, and we're going to get to that in just wait, wait, a wait, second. Wait, 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 I totally reject the premise of the question, because affordable to you mm -hmm. is different than affordable to me. You're a gajillionaire. I'm barely scraping by. <laughs> affordable to me is different than what's affordable to Kev. He's living mm -hmm. with, like, nine people above a bar in, in South Central Indi Indiana. Uh, you know, that's, a, that's... It's, it's like the word comfortable. Sure. Right. What's comfortable totally for you is I, not comfortable for and me. And by the way, the reason housing is so quote unaffordable now is the property tax issue which not one of them mm -hmm. has a concrete plan to actually address property taxes for all hoosiers the only one who has remotely has a plan is written hour and that's only for the older people now one of these people has a plan to do that so i i look these people all suck okay let's just be honest let's just be direct the only one that's remotely interesting has been written hour she's not going to win i'm probably going to vote for her but she's not going to win and so you're going to be left with one of the following four turkeys. It's going to be Braun. It's going to be Chambers. It's going to be Doden. It's going to be Silent Suzanne. Do you believe that any of those four people, not what they say in their ads, mm -hmm. not what they tell you at a Lincoln Day dinner, on their actual voting or governing record, do you believe any of those four people give two dams about you or your existence? Well, we can't even look at Brad Chambers' voting record because he's an outsider. So is <laughs> Doden. 44% said they were unsure or didn't know about who would do a better job at making housing more affordable. I did want to play this one clip before we get into break and get to those Delphi uh, questions and voicemails. Americans now need an annual salary of $110,000 to afford a medium-priced home. Ooh. And this is an increase of 46% over the past four years. This is from Fox News. Check this out. The average home buyer needs to make over $110,000 to afford the average home. A new bank rate study showing that the required salary to make that purchase has jumped 46% in just four years. Home buyers only needed to make 76000 back in 2020. And the issue, widespread. You now need a six-figure salary to buy the average home in 23 states, including the District of Columbia. Four years ago, that number was just six. Mortgage rates, of course, have played a small role in the bump, but home prices have, by and large, kept pace with the needed salary to buy them. The average home up 42 percent, sitting at $412,000. Now, even though the housing market may be pricing people out, people shouldn't be too quick to think that renting is the solution. Since President Biden took office, rents are up nearly 21 percent. Okay, so when you take it in that context, most people, at least 23%, think that Mike Braun will do the best for Indiana. 44% unsure. I, I would That's love to, a lot of unsures. I would love to ask those people, mm -hmm. 
and obviously the way Abdul does polling and is a professional pollster that he hires, that's not how you do it. But I would love to find those people and go, based on what? Like, what policy does he have that you think is going to help you at all? Mike Braun, here is the real story on Mike Braun. Okay, and if you want to vote for this, then fine. But you can't vote for what you know based on someone's track record and then be surprised that they followed up their track record. Mike Braun is a super rich guy who really wanted to be in public office and has routinely bought his way into public office. That's his entire track record. He's been horrific. His voting record is awful in those times in public office, but he has time and time again used his wealth and now his connections to wealth based on him buying himself into the last public office to be able to go to the next thing he wants to go to. Why would you think that that person is going to do anything to help you? anything to help you and by the way mike braun josh kelly any of you people if what i just said is wrong and you want to dispute it waltz your ass in here and let's have a conversation about it you know they'll go on other shows on here casey mm -hmm. they'll go on with tony they'll go on with hammer and nigel they will not come here because they know what mike braun did in 2017 is indefensible it's gross and it's indefensible how he voted repeatedly to screw the people of this state and they have no answer for well it. while you're on a roll i think it's uh appropriate that i bring up this last point from the poll Oh, I thought we were done. Governor Holcomb's approval ratings among undecided voters was nearly 60%. Uh, yeah, right. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> now, there was just a poll that came out that had him. Now, no, wait, wait. This is among Republican voters, mm -hmm. right? Okay. So I'd probably believe that. There's probably, if you look at the election, there's probably 60% of the Republican Party that is establishment enough that they're, or apathetic enough that they're probably Okay, now there was that Fox poll that came out, which was all voters that had him in the in the 30s. He was like in Biden territory. Mm -hmm. So if you take the Democrats and independent-minded people or libertarian people who hate him, and you couple them with the 30% of the Republican elector, 35 or 40 or whatever it is that can't stand him, that's probably about right. I mean, they're, they're, he would he could he would that's probably air quote approval rating is all, you know. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It's it, in the eye of the beholder, right? Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean people would vote for him in an election, but. Prob probably. I mean, yeah, that's probably right. Sounds about right to you. All right, we've got a couple more voicemails we're going to get to next on 93 WIBC. Like magic, it appears in the sky. A rainbow. Somewhere, Somewhere over that rainbow lurks not bluebirds or dreams. Hidden behind that beauty is trouble. Get a cone tornado right there. Don't be fooled. Tornado on the ground! tornadoes. Oh my gosh, look at it. Oh my gosh. This spring, depend on your severe weather station. Baseball size hill. 93 WIBC. Getting quality employees to fill positions in your company is essential, but finding those people can be a major hassle unless you use ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter makes finding quality people a breeze. And right now you can try it for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash free. With ZipRecruiter, one click sends your job to hundreds of top job sites. But more than that, ZipRecruiter's advanced technology identifies the candidates with the skills you need, sends you a list of great matches to review, then actively invites them to apply for your job. And the results speak for themselves. Four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. That's right, the first day. Now you can focus on your business and let ZipRecruiter do the work finding the best people for you. See for yourself. Experience the ease, efficiency, and power of ZipRecruiter for free. Just go to ZipRecruiter.com slash free. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash free. ZipRecruiter.com slash free. When you get nachos, tacos, empanadas, spicy queso with jalapenos, Fabto Bismol's there. Pepto-Bismol provides fast, effective relief from nausea, heartburn, indigestion, upset stomach, and diarrhea. All the things that can happen unexpectedly on vacation. So before you travel, pack the Pepto. Pepto-Bismol. When you have nausea, heartburn, indigestion, upset stomach, diarrhea. Use as directed. Keep out of reach of children. This week at Sullivan Hardware and Garden, get 30% off all patio furniture, wicker, Berlin Gardens, poly, cast aluminum, teak, and more. 
trial was previously scheduled to begin on October, but now it will start on Monday, May 13th. Richard Allen accused of killing Abby Williams and also Libby German back in February of 2017. He was arrested and charged for their murders in October of 22. Case garnering widespread national attention, and now his defense has opened a GoFundMe page. And you question, should you give to this defense fund because they say it will equal the playing field? Yeah, I, I really am genuinely torn on this because I think the guy's getting totally screwed. I think the judge has done some really, really bad uh, some really bad things and uh, bad rulings. I think that it's been rigged against him. I think the allegations the defense has made about um, law enforcement are very, very concerning and I I, want to know the truth. And the fact that the judge is denying him these witnesses, which is what this GoFundMe has been set up for, uh, there's a big part of me with all the doubts that have been created so far in this case that I there I say yeah I want to I want to give to this guy. However, I'm still sitting back here. The logical part of me who still wants to believe in the best of people and p- people in positions of authority, even though I'm proven wrong time and again, to say well, what if there is this smoking gun? What if they have this thing that they're holding back, and then we get to trial and boom, there it is, and he's you know caught red-handed at the scene of the crime. Well, then I just gave money to help. Mm -hmm. you know, a a potential murderer. And so I really am genuinely struggling with a guy that I feel is getting a raw deal and I want the truth to come out versus what if there's just something they haven't revealed yet. But then part of me is like, why wouldn't they reveal it? If they had, they know public opinion. There are many people that have turned against law enforcement and the judicial system on this based on what they perceive as, you know, things not being on the up and up and the playing field being level. Why wouldn't they have put this smoking gun out there already? All out there for the public to, to see. Yeah. Jury summons have been sent to 600 Allen County residents, and the special judge expects that it's going to take about three days for the jury selection. The jury is going to be sworn in on the fourth day and then opening statements will begin on the fifth day so that means that the jury could start hearing testimony from the witnesses expert or not on friday may 17th here's a phone call about your question hey guys listen to you talk about the uh, delphi case and uh, i totally get rob's view and uh he's not a bad guy for wanting to donate to the case to get the truth getting the truth and and is different than justice but you can't have justice without the truth coming out. So I've got 12 years of experience with Department of Corrections and, and peace officer and stuff like that. And there's there's just times where, you know, the truth hurts, but sometimes it's the justice overcomes it. Rob, you're not a bad guy for wanting to, to donate to his case if you feel he's getting railroaded um, or even just to get the truth. Because in the end, if something is going to come out there's no way to say it's xyz but something is going to come out that hasn't been released it's how the state works it's how the defenses work there's always something that comes up right before so yeah it, somebody just put this in the youtube chat you can watch us on youtube if you want to just put kendall and casey in they can't surprise the defense with evidence at trial yeah i thought that was a thing right don't you have to put give all the evidence in, in advance? discovery yeah, yeah so but when? Like, what, what are we doing here? I mean, what, is it hanging on to it another three weeks? Is that going to help you? I mean, what what are we doing here if there is this definitive smoking gun that no one's seen, which is, I think, what this guy is talking about. Like, mm-hmm. hey, what's the thing that's going to come out? Uh, look, the, the defense theories, and I agree with Hammer. If they let those photos get out, those people are gross. But the defense in these filings so far, if I'm a juror, they've created reasonable doubt in my mind. Mm-hmm. If that's all the prosecution has... Uh, totally, 100% reasonable doubt. Here's another call. I I agree, but I disagree because the lawyers are there to prove the innocence or if he is guilty. And for what he did, I feel like the guy's dug his own grave. So, and I, I also look at the, the public shouldn't be putting money into somebody else's pocket. Because we obviously do not know whether he is innocent or guilty. That's just my opinion. But um, I wouldn't put a dollar in it. Have a good day, guys. See you. That guy should run for governor. He's right with Doden in the best non-answer department. Because that was (laughs) the the, he. It's like you're as we have identified the question. Mm -hmm. 
The question is, is he getting a fair defense? Is he getting a fair shake from law enforcement and the prosecution and the judge? My belief right now is no, he's not. If I thought he was getting a fair defense, this wouldn't be an issue. But I feel like the whole thing has been rigged against him. Now, if your answer is no, but then are you saying that every person who's just accused of a crime then doesn't deserve a defense? Because all he's been is accused of the crime. The prosecution has really offered limited evidence, sketchy at best, that would lead one to believe he's guilty. So uh, that would be my follow-up question to that guy would be, Okay, so any person accused, you, you say he dug his own grave. Mm -hmm. How did he dig his own? Isn't he innocent until proven guilty? What did he do to dig his own grave? Because all I see is some circumstantial evidence that doesn't amount to a hill of beans. Well, by extension, is he saying that his defense attorneys have done it for him? Uh, but I but think they've actions. done a great job of creating reasonable doubt. Like, uh, like, I'm a default person who, when it comes to law enforcement, my default is, hey, these are good, noble, decent people who want to get the truth, and overwhelmingly amount of people who are in that profession fit that criteria and description. But I'm looking at this in these defense filings, and again, I haven't read it as intricately as like Hammer has or mm -hmm. um, you know Donnie Burgess has, but uh, the stuff I've read and I've talked to many people who do live in this world, um, I have serious doubt about whether this guy did it or not. So the proceedings are going to take place at Carroll County Courthouse in Delphi. Trial uh, is going to take place six days a week. They're going to do this Monday through Friday, nine to Monday through Saturday. Where rather. are you at on this? Nine to five. What? Giving money or not giving money? No, like money? where are you at? I mean, do, do, do you look at this? And go, there's major issues here. Where are you at on this? <laughs> no, I think that there's there's some questions that need to be raised. I don't know if he did it or not. I think that there's. I'm curious if they're throwing all of this religious cult stuff in to muddy the waters. I don't know what's going on there. I want to get to the truth. However, I also don't want to put my money into his defense. Okay, I would be, uh, obviously, I would never get picked to be on a, I'm too opinionated, whatever. I think you could get picked to be on a jury, though. I think you could definitely get picked to be on a jury because you're much more reasonable. So, like, you're. Yeah, until I put down WIBC yeah, and then they bad. go, yeah, nah, that, you're out of here. But I'm saying just who you are as a human. Like, I, uh, let's just say I was, uh, I know we got to get to a break, but let's just say I was, uh, garbage man mm -hmm. or whatever you know we love our garbage men we always talk very fondly of the garbage man. i'm mm -hmm. not in any way meaning to put that profession down but i think in my interview with whoever mm -hmm. i think i would still get get struck i think i'm too opinionated i think i'm too direct i feel like you are a reasonable enough person that you could get picked on the jury. picked on the jury so mm -hmm. i think your interpretation of what's going on is very interesting to me because i think you're the sort of person who could actually get picked to be on the on the jury I think that I have an ability to kind of see through opinion versus fact. I agree. So that would be beneficial. Yeah. To, to be who? on a jury. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. To you, period. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All right. It is Kendall and Casey. It's 93 WIBC. 93 WIBC Mobile News. On the level. On the go. The chances are increasing. I'm Kirk Darling. Here's what's trending at 1130. A tornado is already said to have hit Evansville early this morning, causing some damage to buildings and homes. Lots of storms hit parts of the state overnight, and more are expected today. The most likely threat will be uh, hail because we're on the eastern end. The tornado threat might develop as the evening goes on. Matt Eckhoff with the National Weather Service, who says the threat actually increases the further east you go. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu says there will be an investigation into the airstrikes that killed seven aid workers in Gaza. In a statement, Netanyahu said that there was a tragic event in which our forces unintentionally harmed non-combatants in the Gaza Strip. The aid workers were members of the D.C.-based nonprofit World Central Kitchen, which delivers meals to people in war zones. On the level, on the go, and on WYBC.com. It's the first day of the first grade. And she found a new best friend It's a laid back Sunday afternoon You wish would never end The homemade taste of bluebell And good friends gathered round The good old days are being made right now St. Louis brought the world gooey butter cake Now bluebell brings us gooey butter cake ice cream a cake batter ice cream with a luscious cream cheese swirl and gooey butter cake pieces. Mmm, it's the gateway to the best in pints and half gallons. The good old days are being made right now. 
Ice cream at Safeway Foods and Harvest Supermarkets. Did you know that the tubs and showers installed by most bathroom remodelers aren't waterproof? I'm not kidding. They're not waterproof. That's because the other guys cheap out and put acrylic caulk directly on acrylic tub and shower panels. You can't do that. Water will seep through, and then you've got mold, mildew, and rot. To do it right, you have to first prime the surfaces, then apply the caulk, then you have to seal the caulk. It's a three-step process. Prime, apply, seal. If you've ever seen shower seams with mold growing on them, well, now you know why. Some cheapskate decided to save $25 in materials and 20 minutes of labor. And now you have a mold and mildew problem. Call Baths R Us instead. We never cut corners. We always take our time to do it right for a 100% waterproof installation every single time. Call now and get $1,500 off plus low to no monthly payments. Our number is 317-886-1761 or online at BathsRUs.com. That's BathsRUs.com. The regular season is winding down, but the energy inside Game Bridge Fieldhouse is ramped up. Fans, we need you to bring your intensity and passion down the home stretch and make your impact felt every game. Step back three. Tyrese got it. Uh-huh. Your Pacers meet the best from the West in a Friday night matchup with the Thunder. Get your tickets at Pacers.com. Pacers, Thunder, Friday at 7. Fellas, there's a lot of people talking about testosterone, but do your homework and go to a provider that you can trust. We recommend Low T Center to get your levels checked. At Low T Center, they make it quick and easy. You walk in and take a simple blood test, and you'll get your results back in about 25 minutes. If you've been feeling tired, grumpy, have noticed weight gain and loss of muscle mass, you may have low T levels. Go to LowTCenter.com and book your appointment online. That's LowTCenter.com. Low T Center, reinventing men's health care. It's the first day of the first grade And she found a new best friend It's a laid back Sunday afternoon You wish would never end The homemade taste of Bluebell And good friends gathered round The good old days are being made right now St. Louis brought the world gooey butter cake Now Bluebell brings us gooey butter cake ice cream, a cake batter ice cream with a luscious cream cheese swirl and gooey butter cake pieces. Mmm, it's the gateway to the best in pints and half gallons. The good old days are being made right now. The good old days are being made. Look for Bluebell ice cream at your local grocer and pick up your favorite flavor today. Andy's Leader and Patio Installation is now offering a new driveway package. Schedule a free estimate today at IndieDecorativeConcrete.com. That's IndieDecorativeConcrete.com. Woodard M. Hart, Henry Reeves, and Wagner. Over 140 years specializing exclusively in patent, trademark, trade secret, and copyright law and litigation. On the web at USPatent.com. You're listening to The Kendall and Casey Show. On 93 WIPC. He seems like he's having a hard time picking friends that aren't accused of sexual assault of some kind. Oh, wow. That's quite the intro, Casey. Yeah, it is 1137. It's Kendall and Casey on 93 WIBC. I'm talking about Ashton Kutcher because he's now expecting a subpoena over his, quote, good friend, Diddy's sex trafficking probe. He's and a what? He's expecting a subpoena. Oh, Boy. Yeah, and now his wife, Mila Kunis, has banned him from speaking to P. Diddy. So he was, if you remember, he was, he, he, her, he, her, that sounds like a Twitter bio, doesn't it? He, mm-hmm. her, um, they, yeah, also a Twitter bio, uh, <laughs> right? His Ashton Kutcher and his wife mm-hmm. came out in support of Danny Masterson, right? He, who, they, and they wrote that letter in his defense. Right. They, yeah, I guess maybe support is a strong... Although, I don't know. What Would you call it support? I don't know. Yeah, they okay. wrote a letter of support Okay, for very him. good. Thank you. You're the yeah. person of reason here. I didn't want to be accused of, you know, going overboard. Who was obviously accused of and ultimately convicted of some pretty horrific things... Right. ...related to uh, sexual misconduct. Mm-hmm. And now... What, he was buddies with P. Diddy? For decades, apparently. They were close, and now... 
Now, in fairness, P. Diddy's not been charged with anything, right? He has not been charged with anything, but I guess he owes some banks nearly $100 million after he took out eight mortgages on three different homes. So how that's you, also in the mix. How do, okay, as somebody who had, you know has taken out a mortgage, I'm a little familiar with the process. However, not for a hundred. How do you get a how do you get a hundred mil? <laughs> you should want, well, you go to three different banks, and I don't know if the banks are talking to each other to know. They have to, right? Can you imagine owing a hundred million dollars? No, no. Of course, Diddy's mansions were raided by Homeland Security agents. Yeah, which is a federal level, uh-huh. and because it's Homeland Security. That alludes to the fact that it's international as well. Well, this is the interesting point on all of this is what is the scope of this dealio? Because we talked about the day after the raid. Mm -hmm. We said we don't have any idea. However, you would tend to, on the depth of the and the level of resources that were used, he's not just some ancillary witness Mm -hmm. that is, you know, had some connection to somebody who's accused of something. You would tend to believe they're looking at him as being the thing. Well, one of his associates, this guy's name is Brandon Paul, one of Diddy's associates. Do you have any associates? Was there anybody you'd say, like, who would be, would Kevin be our associate? No, Kevin's my friend, co-worker. Okay. Do you have anyone who you would call, like, how how do you get it? associate. How rich do you have to be to have an associate? Yeah, I don't know, because I was thinking my accountant, but that would just be my accountant. I mean, we used to jokingly on this show. Right, you know, you'd have your wife associate yeah, or yeah. your girlfriend associate. Yeah, and, but that was meant in jest and in fun. Mm-hmm. Like, this guy really has associates. He really has an associate who has really been arrested by police for being a drug mule. Oh. And so, I mean, Ashton Kutcher, on that. this guy, he just needs to, I don't know. He, he needs a better vetting process for his well, friends. Well, but look, I mean, a lot. It, it is no surprise that, like, you know, people that live in the same orbit mm-hmm. would associate Go to the same parties. Together, Do right? the same thing, have the same hobbies. I mean, you know, who are our friends? The radio people or, you mm-hmm. know, my friends for years were political people until right. I got banned from all the political stuff. <laughs> you know, it's like that's kind of your orbit of what you would hang out. It doesn't mean... Ashton Kutcher is anyway involved in anything illegal or whatever, but it does mean that, yeah, you have kept company with what appears to be some pretty sketchy mm-hmm. individuals who have made some pretty poor judgments. Well, his wife is uh, laying down the law saying, no, you're not talking to him anymore. Is, is she a thing anymore? Is she an actress? Does she do anything? She was in a movie a few years ago. Um, oh, gosh, the the housewives, the moms, the... No idea. Yeah. No, I don't go to the movies. Well, there was a scene in it where they were in the cereal aisle in the grocery store, which was in slow-mo, and they yeah. were drinking vodka at the same time. So she's doing mom <laughs> roles now is what her thing yes. is. Does she have, do they have kids together? I'm not sure. I don't think so. Oh, this is a good song, Kev. Thanks. Let's just go to break with this, just right? just want to go out with this. Wait, what are we talking about? The Eclipse <laughs> next? Yeah, and how it may affect your dog. No your, way. your animals could Stop. be affected by the eclipse. Yes, it's true. Scientists say so. Follow the science. Follow Rob. the science, Casey. It's Kendall and Casey on 93 WIBC. Michelle's presents Password. The word is basement. Wet. Rain. Leaky. Faucet. Stinky. Socks. Moldy. Underwear. (sighs) No, it's basement. Uh. Really moldy underwear. Well, sometimes. Ew. Basement waterproofing and French drains. Life happens. Michelis happens to help you through it. Come on, take your basement back. 844-FIX-INDY. Hey guys, it's Rob from my friends at We Grow Hair Indy. And you know, it has been more than three years now since I got my hair back at We Grow Hair Indy and I couldn't be more happy with it. You know, one of the great things when you... Uh, visit We Grow Hair Indy and and you meet with Darren and the gang and you decide to go forward with something is you get the joy of the experience over and over and over again every time you look in the mirror. I know that's one of my favorite parts about the whole thing is that every time I look in the mirror, I'm so glad, I'm so happy about the choice I made to go to We Grow Hair Indy. Like I said, Darren and the gang, 
top-notch people. They're very low pressure. You have a totally free consultation. They'll look, take a look at your dome, and they'll tell you, here's what we think we can do to try and help you. You got nothing to lose, everything to gain. 317-522-2995. 317-522-2995 or visit wegrowhairindy.com wegrowhairindy.com tell them Rob sent you without the ones like you who work tirelessly to keep things running everything would suddenly stop hospitals factories schools and power plants they all depend on you no matter the weather emergency or time of day you're the ones who get it done at Granger, we're here for you with professional grade industrial supplies Count on real-time product availability and fast delivery. Call, click Granger.com or just stop by. Granger for the ones who get it done. Come on up for the rise. Come on up, lay hands and mine. So, Rob, you got a package in the mail yesterday, a gift. I sure did. A pair of glasses, I sunglasses did. Yeah. for the solar eclipse. Absolutely. I think there may be more than one in there. You think so? I, I haven't opened it yet. But uh, Susie, I believe was her name, mm-hmm. sent me, sent us. I mean, it, here's the thing. You know, I don't open the mail. Yeah. However, this one came from Amazon. So it's like, I don't think Amazon is probably in cahoots with some <laughs> criminal mastermind <laughs> to cause harm to me. So yeah, I was okay you trusted with that. it. You send me a letter or a package that's hand addressed or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're, I'm not opening that. But if it's from Amazon, I feel reasonably assured that Jeff Bezos has bigger fish to fry than some you know, Indianapolis radio talk show host. So I feel like if they're the third party facilitating the sending, I'll open that. And I did. And Susie sent us, sent us some glasses to watch the eclipse. That was very thoughtful of her. Uh, so now you're completely prepared for the solar eclipse. So here's the thing, Casey. And yeah. I look, I freely admit, you know, we've had this conversation before. I feel like science is being exploited here. You it's being so? commercialized. You yeah. know, I mean, look, as someone who loves the science, you know, nobody, nobody reveres the science, trusts the science. More than me, so I didn't get that COVID shot because I trusted the the science. Mm-hmm. Um, that that, uh, that I feel like we're exploiting science, and uh, I just I, I don't like I don't like the commercialization of the whole thing. So you're not doing anything to get Bruce prepared then? Uh, what what the hell would I do, Casey's dog? Right. Okay. Well, there's a new study he out. Lives inside. A new report that says your pet could be affected oh, by the solar eclipse. Really? Yes. Unusual behavior. Uh-huh. And this is because. Wait! 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 What do you <laughs> more mean? More unusual. I, yeah. What? What? How would I? No. Right. Well, they say that the dogs are going to, you know, exhibit unusual behavior. Like what? Well, like they may nap <laughs> more than normal. They might nap? Mm-hmm. Oh. Yes. Boy, let me alert the authorities. My English bulldog is uh-huh. sleeping a lot. It's going to disrupt their circadian rhythm. Their what? Their circadian rhythm. What the rhythm. hell is that? That's that natural rhythm within your body that lets you know when it's time to sleep or oh. when it's time to wake up. Uh-huh. Uh, and the animals are going to respond accordingly. Uh, the report says that cats may yawn uh-huh. more than normal. Yeah. And there might be howling or they might pace back and forth. They could pant and even scratch. This has to be totally made up. You think so? Well, how would they know? Ha- hasn't there not been one of these in who knows how long? Is it 100 years yeah. or whatever? Isn't this a once a once a century type of event or something of that nature. That's why everybody is descending upon Indianapolis. And did, have you seen all of the security measures that are in oh, place? Yeah. I had a look. I t- look. I've been totally snoozing on this, and I look at it as somebody will remind me at two thirty in the afternoon, the day of. Hey, the eclipse is coming up. Don't forget to put your glasses on and step outside. Why? Because I'm a normal human, Casey. Mm-hmm. I'm a normal functioning human who behaves in a normal regular functioning manner yeah, so that's how you would judge the thing there it is oh cool thanks that was uh, interesting now let's go on with our lives i had a conversation yesterday with a former impd police officer and he's like he calls me good buddy of mine and he goes hey man what are you hearing about the eclipse mm-hmm. it's like what the what do you mean what am i hearing about the eclipse? it's gonna happen it's gonna like six we got six minutes don't we like it's gonna happen then we go about my day he's like no, man, he's like, there's a huge, there's now huge security concerns yeah. over this eclipse. Well, the governor has called in special security, right? He's taken special privilege to make sure everybody's set. Okay, so the, what there is, the, the, the fear is what? That people are going to be driving, this is going to be like Independence Day, where people are going to descend on large congregated areas, and they're going to look up and say, what, take us to your leader? Like, what? what is the theory here? That well, people are gonna I be- think... 
The for ba- traffic wise, I think people are nervous, like on the highways, that people are going to stop to look up and you know wait, totally wait, wait. disrupt traffic. Wait, wait, they think people are going to be. Let's just use seventy Interstate seventy mm-hmm. as an example. That mm-hmm. runs obviously through the state. People are going to be motoring at a relatively high rate of speed, yeah. and they're just going to pull off onto the side of the road. Yeah. They know the eclipse is coming, mm-hmm. but in the middle of the eclipse, they're then they have taken no priority whatsoever over the eclipse to view the eclipse. Yeah. But in the middle of the eclipse, they're then going to feel so compelled. Mm -hmm. that they're going to pull over to the side of the road and it's going to, or what, they're going to park in the center of the road? Like, what is the theory here? Yeah, I think that's it, that people are just going to be driving and all of a sudden it's going to happen and, oh, they're going to slow down and want to look at it and totally disrupt traffic. I I told my buddy, I said, this is crazy. You're totally out of bounds here. And he said, no, no, no. He goes, and this is not a, this guy's very conservative. This is not a, you know, this is not a sky is falling person. He said, no, no, no. There's all these huge concerns. He raised another uh, interesting point of concern that I had not even thought about, and this is how his mind works. Obviously, he was in law enforcement for years. There's all of these places that are having these watch right, parties events. or whatever they're mm-hmm. called. And I would assume, and I, obviously, you know, assuming is dangerous, but like, isn't there one at the Motor Speedway? Yes. Okay. What security measures are the Motor Speedway, is the Motor Speedway putting in place? Obviously, it's the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. They do the world's largest single-day sporting event. They know how to secure venues. I'm not doubting that. But what, are there similar measures in place to get, like, into the Speedway? Right. Because you're going to have, by this estimation, thousands upon thousands of people gathered together. Right. What? What? Extra security will be present to make sure that everyone's safe. I you don't have to know. go through a metal detector. I have no idea. You don't have to go to a metal detector do to go to the Indy 500, do you? Yeah. Uh, no, you don't, do you? And they pull that off. Right. I'm not doubting what they're doing. I'm simply saying I had not even thought about this until this guy called me. We had about a 20-minute conversation, and when I got done laughing at him initially, then I thought, well, he's calling about this, so this is clearly must be an actual serious thing. And then I started thinking about all the things he was talking about that. Well, yeah. What are they doing at these large venues where, I mean, there's something like a million people or could descend upon central Indiana for this. Right. Well, and another thing is the Indiana public school, Indianapolis public schools are closed. They just, a lot of schools yeah. are closed for the day or they're doing at home learning. Uh, and they say a lot of that has to do with the eye safety. Uh, of the what? The, you know, eye protection, people wanting to look up at the sun and burning their eyes or the lack they of the They can't sun, give rather. the kids the little glasses? Well, instead of doing that, they're just saying oh, they're go gonna home just cancel. for the day. See, they always it's tell somebody you, else's responsibility. Isn't it amazing how they always tell you how irrelevant public school actually is? Like, remember during COVID? Oh, you don't have to come. No, no big deal. Oh, it's the clip today? You don't have to come. We're told when they want the money, like when the referendums or the property assessment, well, we, what, the, how, what, 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 what about the children? Mm-hmm. But then yet when it's uh, COVID or it's the eclipse, nah, you don't have to come. It's no big deal at all. I think you got to make up your mind. One more point. of edit, Can I make an editorial comment on this? Sure. About all these people that are apparently going to descend upon Indianapolis yeah. or the greater central Indiana area. Mm-hmm. I feel the same way about them that I do about the people who have invaded the discount brands at the Walmart. <laughs> Remember, I told you. We, you were here the whole time. Right. We had the deal. I had uh-huh. the deal for years with the uh-huh. rich people, which is you buy the name brand. I buy the Walmart brand. I'm poor, it's fine. You stay out of my lane, I stay out of yours. I don't have wealth envy. We're all in separate lanes, and I'll get the discount stuff. We're, we're fine. Mm-hmm. And then during COVID, because they couldn't get the stuff because of the supply chain, and then people were losing their jobs or whatever, then the people started buying the Walmart stuff, which is a clear violation of the agreement we had. Then I couldn't get the stuff. The stuff I could get was much more expensive. That's a violation of the agreement. I feel the same way about the people coming into Indianapolis. Look, you've got your little tourist attractions. Mm -hmm. You've got your little place that you live and the little quaint charm and whatever of that. I'm not descending upon where you live. We just got the benefit of this thing is going through Indianapolis, the central Indiana area, that's a benefit for for us. Now you're ruining my day. You've been here this whole time. Yeah, I've been here the whole damn time. When you get a prime seat in your backyard for the event. Wait, 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 though. Am I going to be able to get home, though, or am I going to have to work from home? We have to talk to Matt Himlin about this because my cop buddy was telling me, oh, you may not be able to get out of the radio station to be able to get home how why would you not be able to get out of the well radio if traffic station? is this bad and people are literally if you got a million people and they're camping Swarming on the interstate well circle? i don't know casey i don't know What's i don't know why on? people are behaving this oh way oh my gosh you're well, talking about the pets i think it's the humans that are having the issue 
<laughs> I mean, this true. guy was. This guy said you probably need to really check with your boss because, to find out what the the traffic patterns or what the security measures are. Because he said you may. It's at we're done at noon. Uh-huh. The things at three. I said, yeah. oh, that'll give me three hours. He goes, no, no, no. He's like, people could be descending upon Monument Circle. You may not be able to get. Out. I might have to do the show in the box that day. Oh my gosh, just an excuse to stay home for well, the, the day. Well, if the kids don't have to go to school, why should I have to go to why work? Why should you have to go to work? Well, you asked about the animal behaviors and how they know this. I don't even care about the animals anymore, Casey. I'm more Studies, concerned about the humans. Scientists studied it back in 2017 oh, when it happened. So, oh. you know, like you've mentioned, we've been through this yes. before, right? Yes. The, okay, can we get back to, can we get back to the human behavior? Why are people doing this? If we, if we, this is the point I made. If we know enough to have studied animal behavior and they're similar enough to have studied animal behavior mm-hmm. and they're drawing conclusions on how the animals are going to behave, then clearly the humans have seen this thing before too. Why are they behaving in this manner? Why are we allowing people to come cause potential security, health, safety hazards to us, the residents of central Indiana? We're not doing that to them. Why are we being inconvenienced and why are elected officials allowing this to happen? Oh my gosh, Rob, it's almost like, mm, I don't know. No, land of the free, home of the brave, liberty. You're about. You're li- oh, allowed to travel wherever I you want in the, in consti- the country. I missed in the Constitution, Casey, <laughs> where it says I'm allowed to go wherever I want and cause safety and health hazards to other people who are minding their own damn business. <laughs> I don't think it's safety and health hazards, but yes, they are allowed to come here if they want. Now I got to find out. I don't want to come to work that day. I don't even want to come to work that day. Take I'm the gonna, day off. Yeah, no, I'm no, 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 no. I'm not Nigel. I won't be working. <laughs> But just from home. Yes. I think that's fair. There's one other thing I wanted to mention to you. Uh, Twitter got the dude yesterday with April Fool's Day. Oh, no. Were you surfing the internet and seeing all sorts of stories pop up, and then you're like, oh, wait a minute, it's April Fool's yeah, Day, Yeah, but right? don't, don't you see the first one the moment you open your phone, and then right away you kind of know the rest of the day, anything hokey is... Right, but then as the day goes on, you might forget, You forget? Right? Did he forget? He forgot, and this was from the official Seinfeld Twitter oh, account. Oh, no. And they said, fun fact, Seinfeld was originally called Costanza and was centered around George. But <laughs> audiences felt he was too much of a ladies man and so the dude is telling me this like oh my gosh you and rob need to talk about this on the show producers decided to pivot and focus on the other side characters and decided to name it seinfeld instead and i looked at him and i said jim it's april fool's day (laughs) he was like oh right that's great twitter got him that's funny that's did you fall for any april fool's jokes well like i said the first one but they're off enough. Like the things that they people post are mm-hmm. off enough. Mm-hmm. There was one. Um, there was a. There was a proposed Adam Schefter, who's a ESPN NFL guy who breaks all the stories for the NFL, yeah. had posted a trade about Justin Jefferson, who's the star for the Minnesota Vikings. And I read it and thought, oh, wow, that's pretty crazy. The Vikings are going through a re- rebuild. And then I read the actual trade. And mm-hmm. I was like, there's no way they would trade him for the, what he's right? saying. That, so usually the April Fool's jokes are like off enough. that yeah. you, It's like the AI. They're still not good enough that I can kind of see through them. But for like one second, it kind of got me. And I thought, that's not even close. There's no way they would get a lot more than that for Justin Jefferson. Right. And then you read farther and you went, yep, April Fool's. Yep. All right. Well, that's going to do it for us today. Thank you, Rob. Thank you, Kevin. And thank you for listening today. Tony Cass. Cass is up next. This has been Kendall and Casey on 93 WIBC. Jefferson Shreve stepped up to fight when no one else would. He put it all on the line. And the liberals smeared him for it with ads like this. Donald Trump and Jefferson Shreve. He's an original supporter of Donald Trump. They attacked Shreve for being a conservative. Jefferson Shreve. An A rating from the NRA. Attacked him for being a loyal Republican. Look who was there, Jefferson Shreve. He was proud to be on the Trump campaign and proud of his own A rating from the NRA. All because Shreve would get tough, back the blue, and stop the crime. But we don't have to accept their lawlessness at our border, in our suburbs, in our state. Because Jefferson Shreve is running for Congress, and he's a fighter for law, order, and a secure border. Jefferson Shreve for Congress. I'm Jefferson Shreve, and I approve this message. Paid for by Shreve for Congress. Do you get sinus infections, congestion, sinus pressure and pain above your eyes, below your eyes, sinus headaches? You've gone to the doctor. You've visited urgent care over and over again, and it's always the same thing. Oh, uh... I know. 
Let's try antibiotics and nasal sprays. But the sinus infections keep coming back. The good news? Relief is possible. How? A minimally invasive procedure done in the office of Indianapolis Sinus Center called balloon sinuplasty. Imagine the relief of not having to deal with your sinus infections anymore. Set an appointment today with Indianapolis Sinus Center and find out if balloon sinuplasty is the solution for you. Call 317-528-9650. 317-528-9650. That's 317-528-9650. Progressive presents 10 things on a food truck owner's to-do list that are harder than getting a commercial auto insurance quote. Stocking the fridge, prepping the stations, finding employees that get along well, finding employees that actually do their job. Looking at you, Gary. Balancing the books, balancing the flavors, having a fresh menu and fresh produce and fresh meat, but never a fresh mouth. But the easiest thing on a small business owner's to-do list? Seeing if you can save on commercial auto insurance. Get a quote in as little as six minutes at ProgressiveCommercial.com. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Coverage subject to policy terms and conditions. This week at Sullivan Hardware and Garden, see their large selection of grills, Weber, Traeger, and Napoleon, along with the Big Green Egg. It takes everyone in the community working together to create a brighter future. Give, advocate, volunteer, live united. Visit liveunited.org to learn how you can help. When was the last time you practiced your home fire escape plan? Be sure everyone in your family knows what to do if there's a fire. Get out, stay out. It's your fire safe response. On the level, on the go. 93 WIBC Indianapolis. Coming up. That could be just as hazardous as a, a weak tornado. The sinkhole had formed on Whiteland Road. The car was upgraded to an actual person shot. Four boys and three girls were hurt in the shooting. 33% said that they would likely vote for Braun. This is the WIBC News at Noon. Everything is on the table. Today's forecast calls for some severe weather. We're looking at a high of 69 degrees. Right now you have cloudy skies and 65. I'm Donnie Burgess. And I'm Ryan Hedrick. Here's what's trending at noon. Hoosiers need to be on high alert today as there's a real risk for severe weather, including tornadoes and strong straight-line winds. Severe straight-line winds, that could be just as uh, hazardous as a, a weak tornado. So also seek shelter inside, downstairs, or in an innermost room. You never know. 